bore cooling tubes that route carbon dioxide through the experiment's systems and regulate its temperature are out of operation. And the program has decided to extend the life of the experiment by installing a new upgraded tracker thermal pump system. That you can see here, it is the UTTPS. It has four pumps and a resupply of carbon dioxide sufficient enough to last the rest of the space station's lifetime. It arrived at the International Space Station earlier this month on North Grumman's Cygnus resupply cargo craft. We're live in the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston, Texas, where planning has been going on, as we mentioned, for years worldwide. And we've arrived at these carefully choreographed spacewalks scheduled to start around 5.50 a.m. Central Time this morning. The astronauts are currently suiting up with the help of NASA's astronaut Christina Cook and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka. NASA astronaut Jessica Mir will be the robotics lead for the Canon Arm 2 today. This will be the fourth spacewalk for Luca Parmitano, who you can see there in the suit with the red stripes, meaning he is EV-1, or Spacewalker 1. He previously has completed 14 hours and 18 minutes in three spacewalks. And this is the fifth spacewalk for Andrew Morgan, who has 26 hours and 57 minutes in four previous spacewalks. He'll be EV-2, Spacewalker 2, and wearing the suit with no stripes. You can see Jessica Meir now in the picture. She will be the one uh, assisting with the robotics today and commanding the Canada Arm 2, which will transport Luca Parmitano to and from the work site and around the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. You're looking inside the Quest airlock, which has two parts. The crew is currently in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. This is where they don their suits, do a pre-breathing exercise, and attach the safer backpack. That's kind of like the jet pack on the back of their suits. Airlock on one. With you on one, Christina. And it's serial number 1031 for Drew's Medox. And that's a good number, Jessica. In the back of the picture, you can see NASA's Christina Cook. She's in the crew lock. That's the outermost part of the Quest airlock. And that's where the astronauts will move for their final communication and suit systems checks with the ground. They'll change their suits to internal battery power and begin the timer for the spacewalk. As I mentioned, the crew has just completed their pre-breathing exercise, which consists of two phases. In the first, they breathe 100% oxygen while outside of their suits, just through a mask, to begin purging the nitrogen from their bodies. In the second phase, the crew gets into their spacesuits, where you can see them now, and conducts something called the in-suit light exercise, or aisle, where they move their arms and legs ever so slightly, uh, raising their metabolic rate to speed up and get rid of the excess nitrogen. The astronauts spend this time pre-breathing uh, to purge that nitrogen from their bloodstream and maintain a 100% oxygen environment. The crew is under 38 minutes uh, for their go to depressurize. 
the uh, crew lock of the Quest airlock. And as we mentioned, the spacewalk will begin once the suits are switched to internal battery power. The suits they're wearing are called the Extravehicular Mobility Unit, also known as the EMU. It's essentially an individual human-sized spacecraft, each containing its own portable life support system. The suit has six layers and provides atmospheric containment, thermal insulation, cooling, solar radiation protection, and micrometeoroid or orbital debris protection. These spacesuits have a lifetime about, of about 15 years and weigh about 300 pounds on Earth, but of course, that number is reduced to nearly nothing when in microgravity. On With you on one. Alex, GMT for the pause of the in suit previous clock is 1037, step 11. Copy, 1037. This is the second in a series of at least four spacewalks to attempt the repair at the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. On the first spacewalk just a week ago, the astronauts removed the AMS debris shield over the workstation that they will be accessing today and jettisoned it into space. They also worked through some get-ahead tasks that were to be completed in today's spacewalk by removing the vertical support beam cover and jettisoning it into space as well. This left the area around the AMS in a good configuration for today's work of cutting the tubes to disable the experiment's current cooling system. During the first spacewalk, uh, Parmitano and Morgan also installed three handrails around the worksite to more easily access and perform work on AMS. The astronauts have several tasks on their plate today, from preparing a power cable uh, that will provide power to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, to cutting six, uh, eight actually, stainless steel tubes that will be connected to the cooling system on the next spacewalk. We've got an animation that will break this down a little bit more and give you a preview of what you can expect to see today. Here we have Luca and Drew prepared for the second of the AMS repair EVAs following a very successful EVA number one. Here we have Luca heading up the Cetus Spur to meet the SSRMS to uh, prepare for his flight to AMS. While Drew will be heading up the Cetus Spur with a tool bag and he'll be heading out directly to ELC2 to prepare his work site and to assist Luca in their EVA2 repair work. Luca has to uh, pitch down the uh, whiff extender here. He left the APF arm with fixing around the end of the arm on the end of the last EVA in order to save time on this one. So he'll get the right settings set up here, ingress the APFR, and prepare for the flight over to AMS.
Once he ingressed into the first round, the end of the Canada Arm 2, it'll be another big maneuver over top of station with great views as Luca heads to the Xena side of AMS this time to work on some MLI covering some power cables. The SSRMS will slide Luca in between ELC 2 and AMS, and uh, he'll get to work with some Russian cutting tools to open up the MLI, the multi-layer insulation in this area. He'll be accessing uh, two power cables that were on AMS for other hardware, and uh, we'll utilize those to connect up to a set of EVA cables to prepare for the pump box arrival on EVA number three. Once those cables are temp stowed, he'll open up yet more MLI in that area to prepare for the mechanical attached device, or MAD, install on the beam. This MAD will uh, be utilized on EVA3 for the mechanical attachment of the pump box. So following this task, the power, data, and mechanical components will all be ready for that pump box to come right out on the beginning of EVA3. Completing that work, the SSRMS will maneuver Luca from the Xena side back a little bit later in between ES ELC2 and AMS to the same works that he was at during EVA1. From here, he will use a, uh, a large set of uh, rough cutters to cut a fill line that will vent out the remaining CO2 in the coolant system, allowing for the fine detailed cuts uh, that will be utilized to connect up the system on EVA3. At the vertical support beam worksite, he'll have six tubes that he'll have to cut. Those six tubes will be six of eight tubes that will be connected to the new pump system on the subsequent EVA. Those tubes, as they're cut, will be capped and identified with tube numbers. From there, the SSRMS will maneuver Luca below AMS for the final two cuts. He'll open up the MLI at that work site, install a tube support bracket, which will protect uh, the other sensitive AMS hardware in this area while he's working here, and finish up with the two remaining cuts that will also be capped. With eight of eight tubes now uh, cut and capped, the SSRMS will maneuver Luca back towards the uh, face one of the truss where he got on, and he'll egress the SSRMS there and head back in the airlock after a successful EVA number two. While he's riding back on the SSRMS, Drew will be cleaning up the bags that have been stowed on ELC2, preparing that work site for the in-between time between the EVAs, and then translating back under the mobile transporter and back to the airlock himself. This will set up the AMS and the station to bring out the new pump system at the beginning of EVA3 and have it installed ready for fluid, power, and data connections. Those are the tasks you can look forward to seeing today during the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Spacewalk number two. This is human time. Yeah, is uh, 10, 43. Copy, As we've mentioned, the challenging part of these spacewalks is that they really were not intended to happen since the AMS was only scheduled to have a three-year lifetime. Therefore, the work being done wasn't planned to be attempted in space, and the tasks can be difficult in the bulky spacesuits and while wearing gloves. However, there has been extensive training by the crew and several tools developed by teams on the ground over the past four years in preparation for these spacewalks. Just to note some of that training, Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano, today's spacewalkers, have had seven sessions in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory dedicated to training on these AMS spacewalks. They also performed several runs on the Active Response Gravity Offload System, or Argos, where they worked with the highest fidelity hardware available, detailed down to the zip ties. They also perform glove box sessions, allowing them to get a feel of what it would be like to conduct these unique procedures while wearing the pressurized suits, and even practice the spacewalk during a virtual reality session.
since they've been in space. The astronauts have been reviewing procedures uh, in preparation to venture outside the hatch, including watching videos of their ground training to recall everything that they learned. The International Space Station is currently flying 265 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean. And we're live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Leading all the flight controllers on the ground through today's spacewalk is Flight Director Jeff Radigan. You can see him there in the center of your screen. And just out of view on your right is Capcom Mark Vandehei. He's on hand to speak with the station astronauts and will hand over communications to the ground IV or Jeremy Hansen once the quest hatch is closed and depressurization is underway. Ground IV Jeremy Hansen is talking directly to the two spacewalkers as they move throughout the task today, choreographing the spacewalk and watching them step by step. He also trained extensively on these spacewalks, so he's a great, uh, a great person for the crew to have on their side walking them through today's tasks. The lead EVA or extravehicular activity officer is John Malarski. He oversees the team monitoring suit information and walking through the procedures while feeding information to teams here on the ground. There are five crew members currently in the Quest airlock, but there are actually six crew members in space right now. That's three Americans, one Italian, and two Russians aboard the International Space Station. The current residents are Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano, who will be our spacewalkers today, Alexander Skvortsov and Oleg Skripochka of Roscosmos, and Jessica Mir and Christina Cook of NASA. Thirty minutes out from the crew receiving their go for depressurization, and you can see the astronauts preparing the SAFER, that's the simplified aid for EVA rescue, the compressed nitrogen-powered backpack that uh, allows a crew member to maneuver independently of the space station. However, it's primarily intended for use if a spacewalker became detached from the station and needed to maneuver back.
The experiment the astronauts are repairing today, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, or AMS, arrived at the space station on May 16, 2011, after being launched on Space Shuttle Endeavour, becoming the most advanced charged particle detector ever flown in space. It was installed robotically three days later, on May 19, 2011, by NASA's Drew Feustel, Greg Chemitov, and Greg Johnson, and ESA's Roberto Vittori. The four astronauts used the Space Shuttle's robotic arm to lift the AMS mass out of Endeavour's payload bay, then transferred it to the Cannon Arm 2 on the station for it to be installed. It lives on the S3 truck stru truss structure outside the station, which is where the astronauts will be heading today, and has been collecting data since its installation. AMS is composed of a large magnet and eight detector systems with over 300,000 electronic channels that provide power to the detectors and record the data they collect. It weighs over 7.5 tons and can gather more than 7 gigabits of data per second. Over the last eight and a half years that the AMS has been in in service, it has collected data on over 140 billion cosmic ray events, helping us to understand just what our universe is made of. Following the upgrade, we expect to uh, see during this series of spacewalks of the upgraded tracker thermal pump system. The space station program expects the radiator on this device will be even more effective and efficient and cool more significantly than when the AMS was originally installed, allowing for science con to continue for years to come. You can see the crew members beginning to move astronaut Luca Parmitano into the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Once he and Drew have arrived inside that crew lock portion, the hatch will be closed between the crew lock and equipment lock, separating them from the rest of the space station, and depressurization will begin. The suit itself is pressurized at about 4.3 pounds per square inch. And to put that into context, the atmospheric pressure we're used to on Earth's surface is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's also the pressure of the inside of the International Space Station with a mixed oxygen, nitrogen environment, again, much like on Earth. The lower pressure in the spacesuit allows for much more flexibility, which is crucial when flexing the rigid gloves for the scheduled six and a half hour spacewalk.
NASA astronaut Christina Cook and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka are moving ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano into the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. You can also see NASA's Jessica Meir down at the bottom of your screen who will be commanding the robotics for today from the space station, moving the candid arm to and positioning Parmitano where he needs to be to access the alpha magnetic spectrometer. The crew will next move NASA's Andrew Morgan into the crew lock along with Parmitano. Close the hatch, depressurize the uh, crew lock section, and then the astronauts will switch their spacesuits to uh, internal battery power, signaling the start of today's spacewalk. About 17 minutes until the crew receives a go for depressurization. Currently moving NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan into the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. They're preparing his safer, his simplified aid for EVA rescue, that jetpack sort of uh, equipment that we mentioned earlier that would help him maneuver back to the station if he were to become detached.
as the crew members attach the safer to Morgan's portable life support system, you can see that his suit is entirely white. There are no rings around his legs, whereas Parmitano's suit, who you can see in the crew portion of the Quest airlock, has red stripes around the legs of his suit, and that will help differentiate between the two when outside of the International Space Station. Parmitano, who is on his fourth spacewalk today, will be EV-1, or Spacewalker-1, and Morgan, on his fifth spacewalk, is Spacewalker-2, or EV-2, meaning he has the suit with no stripes. The major surgery of today's spacewalk will be when Parmitano and Morgan cut eight stainless steel tubes to disable the cooling system currently used on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, or AMS. They will be the first astronauts to cut and later reconnect fluid lines in space once they install the upgraded tracker thermal pump system scheduled for the next spacewalk. If you're watching live online, we hope that you will join the conversation by using the hashtag AskNASA and submitting your questions on Twitter. We have a question this morning from Kostov who wants to know where the cooling pump package will be installed on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Today we'll see the astronauts install the mechanical attachment device, or the MAD, that will eventually hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system uh, outside of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer's vacuum case. We'll see the installation of that pump package installed on the third spacewalk of this series.
And we've got a satellite handover of the TDRS, or Tracking Data Relay Satellite System. We will regain video and uh, audio communications with the crew shortly. Rising above 95 degrees. We'd like to make sure his TCV setting. And they are under nine minutes from a go for depressurization as they move NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. And also, if it's already, uh, basically, we do need to have Good a, ice we, I'm sorry, I missed that, but we have to make sure his cooling gets increased from what it is right now. Okay, we copy. And Mark, we're currently at three, so we will increase. Copy. I'm sure people are going to want to know what the TCV setting ends up being, so that would be appreciated if you let us know. Houston airlock on one. We, Drew's TCV was at three, and it is now at six. He, or excuse me, seven. He'd like to keep it at seven as a max. He says he is comfortable, and uh, seven would be the highest number he'd want to go. Copy. Thanks for the information, Christina. Both crew members are now in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Crew members on the equipment lock portion of this side of the Quest airlock will close the hatch separating the two, and teams here in Mission Control Houston will shortly conduct a go, no go poll for pressure depressurization of the crew lock portion.
Flight Director Jeff Radigan here in Mission Control Houston has just conducted a go no go poll with all of the flight controllers here in the room for the depressurization of the airlock. Everyone giving the green light that the spacewalk is ready to proceed. We've got another Ask NASA question from Deegan, who wants to know if there will be more spacewalks this year. The spacewalk you're seeing today is the second of four planned spacewalks to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. The next is currently scheduled for December 2nd, and the fourth will be planned later on. Today's spacewalk is the 10th at the International Space Station this year. It's also the 223rd spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Airlock Houston on space to ground one. We're seeing good responsiveness on Drew's temperature. Drew's free. Just want to make sure Drew understands he's free to adjust his TCV to anything as long as it's three or above. 
These three are above. Thanks, Mark. Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko closing the hatch between the crew lock and equipment lock portions of the Quest airlock. Since the crew on board received a go from teams on the ground to depressurize the airlock, we'll see that happen in a couple of segments. They'll begin to depressurize to five pounds per square inch from the 14.7 at which the space station uh, currently operates. They'll pause for a systems check, leak checks of suits, tether checks, and communication checks, then resume depressurization to a vacuum to match that outside of the space station. Houston airlock on one for TCV. Go ahead, Christina. Mark, we'd like to confirm that the stipulation of Drew's TCV set as desired but above three is only for right now while he's on the SCU. Once he's out the door, does he have the full range available or do you need to wait and confirm that? Yeah, Christina, he can go to the full range available when he's out the door. And Mark drew copies, and so do I. Thank you. Houston airlock on one notifying you in step 71 that we are complete to that point. And copy, we're, uh, Christina, in the airlock, we're putting step 72.1.2 and .3 in work. We'll give you a call back shortly. Copy that. And while you guys are working that, we're showing that we are above the 100 minutes on the pre-breathe timer. These occurs. Happy. 
We have another Ask NASA question coming from Vlad, who asks how long the AMS is planned to operate after the repairs happening on the spacewalks. We're installing the upgraded tracker thermal pump system, which will actually occur in the next spacewalk scheduled for December 2nd. It has four pumps and a resupply of carbon dioxide sufficient enough to last the rest of the space station's lifetime. The UTTPS replaces the pumps, the accumulator, heat exchangers, valves, and more, and it will be attached to the outside of the Alpha magnetic spectrometer. You got a good view of all the tethers? I do. Great. Just wondering what's going on. Airlock Houston on Space to Ground 1, you are hot mic'd, the EV crew is hot mic'd, and uh, you are go to continue with step 73 and forward. Okay, copy that we are all hot mic and EV crew, did you also copy? One copy. EV2 copy. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Drew, and you are also got to go for through step 76. You have that go. Okay, yeah, copy that. We're on step 76. We're going to crew lock the press. Few cards. Houston concurs. and Luca, first step for you is to verify your SCU is connected to your GCM. Oh, stand by, that was the wrong side of the cue card. Let's, let's start with this. Drew, for you, switch the G-Press pump power to on, O-N. G-Press pump power on, O-N. Okay, we're going to wait 10 seconds, and then after 10, we'll be taking the G-Press pump man ISO valve open. Copy. Pump man ISO valve open. Copy. You'll both be monitoring your suit P gauge. Stays less than 5.5. If it goes above 5.5, Drew, you'll stop the depress by closing the depress pump man ISO valve. Copy. Point zero. Happy thirteen.
Copy, 12. Teams here in Mission Control and aboard the International Space Station stepping through the procedures this morning as Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan are in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, beginning depressurization and preparing to venture outside. Andrew, say again. 10.0. That'd be 10.0. Nine point zero. Nine point zero. Point zero. The ACSI. Things progressing smoothly uh, for the depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. We can see, uh, we'll expect to see it stop depressurizing at five pounds per square inch as we pause for a systems check, including tethers and leak checks of the spacesuits. Our depressurization will resume to vacuum after those checks are complete.
for both of you. When you get to 6.0, you can expect an alert tone. You on copy. Copy. Happy 7.0. Picture for you all, when we get to 5.0, we're going to be pausing the depress for a leak check. I'll either call that or you, whoever sees 5.0 first. Copy. Andrew, I see five TSI. You can take the deep press pump man ISO valve closed. Deep press pump man ISO valve closed. Copy the deep press pump man ISO valve is closed. For both of you on your DCM, switch display status until leak check question mark is displayed, then give it a long yes and follow displayed instructions. And I'll take reports of your O2 actuator position and time left as you go. Okay. And 45 seconds for EV2, look at me. Copy. And we'll catch you on the slide again. Copy. To complete circle two to EVA. Okay, we check complete O2 position IV. Copy EV1 that you're complete. That's affirmative and I'm moving to O2. And then I'm not getting the prompt to uh, go to EV. And mine is showing, uh, I showed airlock pressure at 6.0 at the time that we started. I was showing 5.8. Okay, I copy that. I had 310 millimeters of mercury as my crew lock pressure showing on the PCS, which corresponds to, oh, I see that. Nope, I actually did start you a little bit early, so um, let me check with Houston on that. Houston airlock on one. We completed the leak check at about 5.8 PSI instead of 5. We're talking about it. Copy. All right, Christina, yeah, that's not an issue. The uh, system will work just fine with uh, the depress or that uh, stepped on a little earlier than normal. 
Um, so you can go to step six for both crew. Okay, copy that. And thank you, Houston. And Drew, question for you. You said that, um, can you report again how your leak check completed? Yeah, it's completed now. It's just toggling leak check complete uh, O2 position IV. So I didn't know if maybe since we're at a little higher pressure, it's not pro uh, prompting me to go to EVA. I concur. And Houston's given us a go into the next step, which is to check that your O2 actuator is an EVA. So you have a go to move your O2 actuator into EVA. It works. And uh, for Luca, we'd like you to confirm that you've got your O2 actuator in EVA. We're seeing IV on the ground. I am moving it right now. I was waiting for it to go. And my O2 actuator is EVA for EV2. Okay, copy EV2's O2 actuator is in EVA, and we'll wait for the report from EV1 as well. Yeah, I'm free with the switch to make sure that I get Helping the EVA, but I'm not getting the. Take the second. Okay, um, I got it. Ultra position EVA done. Copy. And with that, Drew, you can take the deep press pump man ISO valve open. Okay. Deep press pump man ISO valve open. Copy. It's open. Crew members conducting their checks for uh, leaks and tether checks and other communications checks on the suits just a little bit early. Uh, teams here on the ground and in space confirming everything looks good and depressurization can continue. And as before, you're going to monitor your suit gauge stays below 5.5, and if it goes above, you'll stop the depress. Copy 3.0, and big picture, when we get to 2.0, we'll be, you, at that time, will take the depressed pump man ISO valve closed, and again, either of us will note when we see that. Okay. 
Copy. Pressure inside the crew lock is under three pounds per square inch on its way to a vacuum. And you can see NASA astronaut Christina Cook and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Konenyenko inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, helping the crew through their final tasks before they step outside of the airlock this morning and begin the second spacewalk to repair the alpha magnetic spectrometer. and we're just coming back from our handover and you'll be reporting your initial tether config to Houston when they're ready. I'll give you that go. Airlock Houston, we are ready to copy. Good morning, this is Luca. Good morning, Luca. Great to hear your voice. I'm going to start with great to hear yours. And I'm, I'm going to start with the load task. So from the D-ring, airlock D-ring extender, I have Drew's right-hand side weight setter. It hooks locked black on black on the D-ring extender. His small hook is on his right-hand side D-ring extender, and the small hook is locked black on black. From his D-ring extender, on the right-hand side, I have his red small Look, he's locked black on black, going to the reel. Reel is unlocked. The large hook, which is yellow, goes to green reel. The yellow is locked black on black. Green reel is unlocked, and his large hook from the green reel goes to my right inside waist better. The small hook from the green reel goes onto the red reel. It's unlocked. My right inside with with setter is on Drew's anchor hook. It's locked black on black, and the small hook goes onto my right inside ceiling extender. And it's locked black on black, and that's the load path that it takes. On my left hand side, I have a ceiling extender. I have two hooks. Green hook and the red hook are both locked black on black. Both wheels are unlocked. And both large hooks are currently on my knee workstation. They are unlocked. That's the end of the tether configuration. Airlock, you said Luca. Uh, we have one thing to double check. It's the status of the anchor hook for Drew's green reel. So the one that's on your right waist tether. And I reported it's locked black on black. Thanks for repeating that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good time. European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano rep uh, reporting the initial tether configuration to teams on the ground, making sure everything is set and in place as depressurization continues in the Quest airlock.
And for both crew members, for your awareness, when we get to a low DPDT, you can expect an alert tone. Copy. Copy. And Luca, our next step is when you see less than 0.5 PSI on the EV hatch, we'll be opening it. Copy. NASA's Christina Cook and Roscosmos Oleg Skripochka pose for pictures from NASA's Jessica Mir, who will be commanding the robotic arm today, after Skripochka and Cook helped prepare the spacewalkers for today's tasks. And Luca, I'm going to ask you, can you repeat your last, please? Yes. So I, I see one on my DCM and I see one on the uh, on the hatch. Copy that, and we have the same out here. for uh, leg space, Luca, for the hatch, you feel good? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, as soon as I remove that deep um, uh, SCU, I'm going to scoot down a little bit. So I think I have a lot of space to do that. Okay, copy.
Hey, Christina, I see zero point five right now. It's waiting for a uh, piece of left final axe to open the hatch. You said you see point five right now. Do you, and you're saying you do see that on the hatch, or you're waiting for that? No, uh, not. Uh, I need a bit, a little bit of shadow. I'm not one hundred percent sure. I mean, I would have. Yeah, I mean. And in here, we're showing that we're closely approaching point five. Okay. Houston airlock on one with Luca's report that he sees 0.5 on the EV hatch. We're showing slightly above, but if you believe he's a go to open the hatch, I can give him that step. Houston is go with opening the hatch. See that, Luca? I'm sure you heard, but you have a go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy. It's unlocked. And with pressure inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock at 0.5 pounds per square inch, the crew has received the green lock to open the hatch. I got a CP high message, and I think that's the expected message. I concur, that's expected. Good job, Luca. Okay, I got the open and lock, and of course the the card, it's uh, outside. Let me see if I can recover that. Before I do anything else, it's going to be a... I copied the EV hatch is open and stowed, and then can you repeat your next? Yeah, the, 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 the card... The repress card tethered is just... Uh, it's right, right at the hatch, so you're just trying to recover it back to the Velcro. Yeah, I might have to redo it. Copy, thanks for relaying that. Just want to position it inside before we go out. Concur. And for everyone's awareness, we have done step 14, taking the emergency MPEVs to closed. That means that our steps on the depress cue card are complete. And um, I recognize you're still working on the card, but I can hand you over to Jeremy whenever he's ready. Okay. Actually, the card is inside and he's uh, turned stowed on the Velcro, and I'm ready for Jeremy. Okay, Excellent. Great. It has been wonderful working with you guys. Have a great day out there. Thanks, Nana. As always, you were amazing. All right. Thanks, Nana. No, like, great job. Luca and Drew, let's get to work. So first step is we're switching power to bat. I want you to stagger those throws. Expect a warning tone. And then check display switch functional. Copy. On bat. Okay, Drew, on the UIA, switch power, EV1 and 2 to off, OFF. And that, uh, Jeremy, my display is not functional. And then battery. Okay. All right. Stand by. I got a tone, but now uh, I don't. I, my green is blank. I, mean, not, I don't think it's expected. Okay, Drew. It's uh, this is we have a procedure for this. We're just pulling it up. I'm going to step you through it. So stand by one. Okay, my my DCM says. There's new power available.
And Luca, just for your awareness, that that's expected. Okay. Okay, your display is functional, correct? Yeah, my display is functional. Okay, Drew, I just want to make sure uh, you might as well pull up uh, Tough Checklist page 28. It's the warm restart. I think I was expecting that. I'm going to go to page. Okay, I'm on page 28. Okay, and the whole key to this uh, procedure is that we're going to talk through it before we actually execute all the steps because at some point we're going to lose calm and we want to make sure you're ready to uh, get yourself back in a good config. And in the past, we have had helmets fog up and you won't be able to see very well. So those are our, our consids. So we'll step into this. So we'll just, I'll read okay. through it and then I'll tell you when to execute. Okay, copy. And I just want to check, uh, we never confirmed, but on the, have we executed the step on the UAA to switch the power off yet? Negative both UIA, uh, EB1, and EB2 are power on. Okay, Drew. So I copied you are in BAT on your suit, and that's what caused this. And then the next step is to switch power EB1 and 2 to off OFF and check the LEDs are out. Okay, so do you want me to proceed with the, the UIA, EB1, and 2 power off? Is that correct? Affirmative. Before we do any cup checklist stuff. That's right, because we believe you will, you're still going to have power at this step, but eventually we're going to get to the point where we, we do shut your power off. Okay, copy. So EB1 power off on the UIA, and on the UIA, EB2 power off. Okay, just confirm the LEDs are out. The LEDs are up on EB1 and EB2 on the UIA. Okay. All right. So here's where we talk about the big picture. So we're going to switch the fan and power off for seven seconds eventually. And then while the fan is off, you're going to be without cooling and CO2 removal. Uh, overheating and loss of visibility are possible. There will be no calm until you take the power back to bat. And if fan operation is delayed or not restored, or power is not restored after switching back to battery, then you can open and lock the helmet purge valve to restore vent flow. So right now it's important to take a moment to confirm the location of the power and the fan switches by feel, as you may not be able to see them. And just to confirm, I'm going to start at step six on page 28, checklist. Yeah, that'll be where we're, we're going to pick up next. So uh, when we give you a go, you are going to go ahead and switch the fan off. You'll expect tones and a fan switch off message. And then you're going to switch the power to SCU, which is going to power down the suit going to count seven seconds, and then you're going to go power back to bat. And then when the five-second power restart is complete, then you can switch the fan on. Yeah, I copy all stand by for your go. Okay, Drew, so you're familiar with the switch locations by feel? I am. 
And then one final reminder, uh, your final config when this is complete, all the switches are going to be towards you. Okay, your go, Drew. We'll talk to you in uh, about 10 or 20 seconds. Okay, copy. And switch to off. This morning's spacewalk officially began at 6.02 a.m. Central Time as the space station was to flying 265 statute miles over the South Pacific east of Chile. However, Andrew Morgan is having to reboot his suit to ensure all the configurations are proper before exiting the hatch. On to step nine. Fan is running. Step nine. The switches are in a good config. Okay. And uh, we heard all of that, so that's a good comm check. And you've checked your display is functional, so we're back on track. Good stuff. And uh, the light, light is out, and I have no missing segments, and I have good tones. I believe we are step three of uh, post difference. Okay, and Drew, just double check you you uh, can cycle through different messages. And the uh, display just functional, and I'm cycling through the pages as expected. Okay. EV1 and 2, you can de deconnect your SCU. Work. Okay. Copy. We can disconnect this here. Then your DCM covers and stow the SCUs. The is stowed in the pouch. and work. Game cover, done. And just to recap, the astronauts put their suits on internal battery power at 6.02 a.m. Central Time this morning. However, Andrew Morgan was having some issues with the displays on his suit, so it was reconfigured. Everything's looking good now, and the spacewalk is ready to proceed. Okay, uh, my DCM cover is in place, and the heat press pump man ISO valve, I can confirm, closed. Okay, for both of you, take your temperature control valve to max hot. E1, max hot. E2, max hot. Okay, both of you switch water on. E1, water on. E2, water on. Check your DCM is blank, bite off. You want blank bite off. Maybe two blank bite off. Okay. Temperature control valve as desired going forward. Check your suit P gauge, please. What is a four and uh, for the gauge of the four point two. And I got four point three on my uh suit P gauge we and I'm probably gonna set my T C B right around three or four. Okay, Luca and Drew, you're going out into daylight. I'm sure you figured that out already. Luca, your go for egress. You're hooking up the safety tethers first. Okay, so I'm go for egress. My visor is going down. And I'm rotating. Hi, right, Drew. Be out there for checks. Yes, sir. After quick checks here on the ground, the team has received a go to egress the airlock and venture outside of the space station. You can see Parmitano exiting the airlock first, that thermal hatch open. Hey, 
As the astronauts are configuring their tethers, they are flying 267 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean. You can see ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano first out the hatch, and you can tell it's him by looking at the red rings around the pants on his suit. That designates him as EV-1 or Spacewalker-1. You can now see Andrew Morgan, NASA astronaut, emerging from the hatch as well. He is EV-2 and wearing a totally white suit. Clean, still clean. Uh, let's see. All right, one green light. Let me see it. Let me uh, back to the other side here before we. Sure. It's your time. Yeah, we'll go ahead. I see the, the light on your helmet are. A single light on right now. We have one green, one two. Um, you all a little bit to your left. One two. You can have up your camera is going it. Um, are you able to see it? Give it a bump. There's three. I see one, two handles are both down. Okay. I have these dry and my gloves are nominal. Can you copy? Look at me, I just want to double check your EVS light is on. Yeah, it is, okay. And I see handles. Your man ISO valve is just touch bump out. If you bring it toward me, I can tap. Just two seconds, just keep up at two. But no. Um, yeah, that hit toward me. Let me keep coming. And actually, it's, it's, yeah, it's all the way down. Yep. Yep. Just, okay. I talked to you when I talked to And, and let me see your tabs. One, two, three tabs up. All right. It's dry, and I had a good long look at my gloves. I got a good idea of the baseline. Okay, can you verify that your wheels are unlocked? It's unlocked. Okay, mine are both unlocked. Andrew, um, I think I'm going to pass you my wheel. And as I go around, I can actually do the step fair lead. It's a little easier if you do it. Okay, let me uh, get this on the BRT here. You all do that? Okay, it's on. Try to put some tension right here. If you just give me it, and I'll and I'll uh, make sure that it stays in place and there you got good. tension on it. Yep. Alright, we're going to uh, go to I think of zero for my next. Okay, we we'll copy. Good, good buddy check. Yeah, good buddy checks. You guys are go to proceed. Uh, between the two of you, you can get the couple of fair leads on uh, Luca's way to phase one. Same fair leads as last time. It works. Okay. 
We get the 554 to lead in place. Okay, I'm working on uh, 500. I think you've copied this already. We put the thermal cover is closed. We did, thanks. All right, I'm up to the spur. You guys are a bit retro today. I got you in the camera view just outside the airlock, heading up to see the spur. That camera's got a strange purple hue, kind of a whimsical journey for you out there today. I'm on page one, on top of the spur, I'm right at the arm, and my next maneuver is going to be to uh, set up my spreader on the arm. All right, Luca, looks yeah, good, uh, looking... good for your tether swap. After checking out one another's tethers, the duo is going to make its way over to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Luca Parmitano, who you can see here in the picture, will take a ride to the worksite on a Canadarm2, also known as the Space Station Robotic Manipulator System, or SSRMS. The anchor is locked black on black on the hydro, and the Parmitano will have a great view as he translates over the space station to the zenith side or the space facing side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. When I was at it, I just uh, dropped, I rotated the uh, space extender to alpha. Okay. With extenders and alpha, that's a good number. Just check the other settings as well 6, uh, alpha, 7 for the width extender. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the clocking is on six, I can see from here. Outside just set it, the seven I can see from here. And I can also verify the width the um, uh, APFR. I got 12. Well, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. And then Foxtrot. Okay, Luca, and that 12 would be on the double line. Should be a clocking of six. Andrew Morgan, now in the picture, is translating to the work site manually, carrying with him bags of tools that will be used throughout the day to repair the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Yeah, all well, those robot guys have all the, all the magic. Uh, Drew, yeah, I'm looking at your way. Am I clear of the arm? Clear of the arm? You are clear of the arm right now. I'm heading upward. I'll see you out there. Uh, yep, that will, you will see me there. Okay, the only reminder okay, for you I is to drop to... your green hook. Same place as last week. Go ahead, Luca. I was just about to tell you that. I am about to drop my green airlock on 3444. Yeah, and it, we, we, I just couldn't quite hear your description of getting your uh, arm uh, safety tether on the arm, but it's there and locked, Luca. I confirm it's there, locked. Okay, good words. Talk, copy or drop in uh, your airlock tether. Make sure both reels are unlocked. And then uh, over for arm ops. Okay, uh, my, my anchor airlock is dropped on 344. Copy. I'm ready for our mods. Okay. Uh, this is Luca. How'd you read me? How'd you loud and clear, Luca? How me? 
I have you loud and clear, and you're going to move the arm to the published ingress position. Okay, copy that. Give me one minute to get into mode, and then we'll be bringing you station Nader about two meters. Okay, copy, makes sense. As Andrew Morgan makes his way to the S3 truss portion of the space station, Luca Parmitano reports to NASA astronaut Jessica Mir, currently inside the space station, that he's ready to ingress the Canada Arm 2. Mir will command the Canada Arm 2 and position Parmitano towards the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Luca, starting motion. Copy, very well. Good motion. Copy, continuing. Jessica, I would stop there if you could. Copy, stopping motion. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll end up driving wrestling from here if possible. That is a more comfortable position for me. Okay, we copy, so I'll take that as GCA complete. And by brakes are coming on. We might. Brakes are on, Luca. Copy, brakes are on. CFR ingress. Copy. Uh, green hook is down 3217. I'm at the Sarge. Gauntlets are down as I make my way around. Okay. Just a reminder about the fair lead today. As the space station flies over South Africa, Parmitano finds his place in the Canada Arm 2. This will give him secure footing and a space to work from as he operates and conducts work, conducts work on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer today. During the first spacewalk, Parmitano and Morgan also installed three handrails around the work site to more easily access and perform work on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which you can see here in the center of your screen. Hey, Jessica, I'm on the arm. Hey, copy, Luca. We need a minute to get into mode. Copy. And you can see Morgan has arrived at the work site. And shortly, Mir will command the cannon arm to, to position Parmitano there as well. The first task for the astronauts today will be some power cable prep. It was previously taken outside and stored for additional activities on these next excursions. This power, ca power cable will provide power from the station to the alpha magnetic spectrometer.
Parmitano will remove caps from the two cable connectors with a special connector tool and then mate the two cables to some EVA cables or spacewalk cables. And the cables that are being mated today will eventually be attached to the new UTTPS or Upgraded Thermal Tracker Thermal Pump System on the next spacewalk. Okay, we have put the relay on 8601. Thank you, Drew. Luke and Jessica, we just want to make sure we're on the same page. Are, are you guys both ready to start operations? Who's ready? Christina and I are just getting those FOR parameters set now. We're ready to pick up in step 2.4. So at this point, we are ready for that, Luca. You have a go. If you give us a go for back off. You are a go for back off. Okay, copy. Six are off. That was a brief astronaut's eye view from the helmet camera of Luca Parmitano. He's currently taking pictures as astronauts are preparing to move him into place near the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Copy. Time motion. 34 motion. You can tell this is Parmitano's helmet camera by the number 11 in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Stop motion. And stop by, Luca. Okay, stop Going to bring you back there and then bring you a station for it. All right. And Luca starting motion forward. Okay. Motion. Happy continuing. And Luca, give us a moment here. We're in position hold. We're going to get the first Joe Cast loaded.
station, Houston is handing over. We'll be back with you in a minute. And just a quick handover of satellites as part of the tracking data and relay satellite system. Teams here in Mission Control Houston in the International Space Station Flight Control Room monitoring the astronauts on this second spacewalk to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Hey, Luca, starting motion on this JOCAS. If you're ready for it, it will be 3.5 minutes. Ready for motion. Copy 3.5. Copy. Starting motion. Luca, if we could get a glove and half check from you during this OCAS. Sure, my half is dry, my gloves are pristine, and no changes, no deltas. Okay, and Drew, uh, now we got the comeback, why don't you tell us about your nest? Yeah, the fair leaf in place, the, um, I got the large, small rats back on both larger RU bags, and uh, and I'm now working on putting the two crew lock bags I brought out here onto the fish stringer, and then I'll take a look at the APFR. Okay, good words. And just a reminder about the trash bag while you're going through this stuff. Also a reminder about that grapple fixture today when you're in the arm. Roger that. This view from the helmet camera of Andrew Morgan, you can tell by the number 18 in the bottom right-hand corner, reporting back his status to Mission Control Houston. Luca Parmitano, who's currently riding the Canada Arm 2, getting a lift to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer worksite, also just reported back a glove and hap check. That's something you can expect to hear throughout the day. Uh, the hap check standing for helmet absorption pad. The astronauts check the helmet absorption pad to ensure nothing is leaking and that the inside of the suit remains dry. And they regularly check their gloves for any damage during the spacewalk. Safer handles. We just saw your your plus uh, in the truss there on ingress to the APFR. We just want to double check. Copy. You work. One, and two handles down. Thanks, Luca. Luca, it looks like just an amazing view from where you are looking through your WVS. What do you see? It's amazing. Um, so uh, I can tell you about it. I did turn my camera on uh, and also I'm taking pictures as we fly. This time I'm taking more pictures than selfies. <laughs> and Luca, that's position hold, and we will be loading the next JoeCast. ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano reporting back an amazing view as the space station flies 257 statute miles off the west coast of Somalia. We are flying right along the coast. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, just off the east side of Africa.
Okay, Luca, we are ready for the next Joe cast. This is in course, and it's going to be three minutes. It'll be course three minutes. Motion. As Parmitano and Morgan move into place for the first tasks of the day at the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, let's go into a little more detail about just the difficulty of these spacewalks. The challenge is that they were never really intended to happen, uh, as AMS was only scheduled to have a three-year lifespan. So to fix AMS, an entire set of tools, more than 20, were developed to help the astronauts accomplish tasks never before attempted in the vacuum of space, like the cutting of the stainless steel tubes that we will see today. One of the tools you'll see is referred to as the zip tie cutter, and that's exactly what it does. Uh, what makes this tool extra special is that it was developed by students at Lone Star College Sci Fair as part of the Micro G Neutral Buoyancy Experiment Design Team's Challenge, also known as Micro G Next. Micro G Next challenges undergraduate students to design, build, and test a tool or device that addresses an authentic current space exploration challenge. The students, which you can see here, uh, who developed the zip tie cutter are watching the spacewalk live today in one of our studios to see their tool in action in space. Trash bag. Okay, copy. Uh, crew like back four, I'm gonna put that on me. Copy. I cannot see you, but from the corner of my eye, I can see the bag. Hiding in our work site. Luca, that is position hold. Give us a moment to load the next OCAS. We're going to anywhere. Coming up on 42 minutes into today's spacewalk, and the space station is about to enter an orbital nighttime. You'll start to see it get darker as they come up on the southern coast of Pakistan. The space station orbits the Earth at about 17,500 miles per hour, meaning astronauts on the space station are treated to about 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. And we'll see a few of those ourselves throughout the spacewalk today. Okay, Luca, we are still in course, and this is going to be three minutes. In course, three minutes. Motion.
NASA astronaut Jessica Meir continues to use the Canada Arm 2 to maneuver ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano into place with a backdrop of the station's large solar arrays, which provide the power to our orbiting laboratory. Okay, Luca, I'm going to read a couple of caution warnings for you too as well, Drew. Uh, avoid contact with zip, cut zip ties, block wire, and expose threads on the AMS um, power cables. And then a reminder for both of you, we can't have two crew members imparting loads on the AMS and ELC2 at the same time. So if you're doing something like getting in or out of an APFR or extra loads in AMS, we need to be talking about that together. And then uh, finally, Drew or Luca, I'll remind you, but the first place you're going today uh, to get access to those power cables is by that Zenith radiator, and we've got the struts there. So we want to avoid uh, loads into the radiator and those carbon fiber struts. Light loads on the forward and after are okay, but the middle strut is no touch. You want coffee? You coffee. Hey, Luca, we are in a position to hold and give us a moment, then the next JoeCast will be bringing you to the Zenith worksite. You can be broken, but I think I understand that I'm in another hold position. Hey, from Luca, position hold now, and we're getting set up for the next JoeCast to the Zenith worksite. It looks like crew lock bag two went over to the nader handrail already. The other thing we want to grab is the transfer red. Transfer red is transferred. It's okay. in place. Copy. All right, and the other thing we wanted to get ready was just making sure the small ORU bag is accessible because we'll need some t stuff out of there soon as well. Okay, Luca, about to start motion. This one will be three and a half minutes to the Zenith worksite. Copy. Astronaut Luca Parmitano making his final approach to the Zenith worksite or the space facing side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. All right, Drew, I think you've got all the key steps. Uh, you're ready uh, for Luca next. Uh, we'll get a glove and half check from you at your convenience, and then uh, with any extra time, you can work on the red bag. OK. 
okay. That was dry. Uh, right glove, the palm, the, the flap of the outer RTV that was had already started up is uh, elevated, but there's intact RTV underneath. Everything looks good. I've got a good idea of what it looks like. Luca, look my way. I don't know which way is we your way. Head. Before the sun goes down. Glove. I copied uh, glove and half check. Drew, thanks for that. So, any extra time you got, just red okay, bag. And, uh, yep. Uh, yep, red bag is accessible. Uh, loosen the strap, and uh, I'll be standing by for a good time that we can grab the mat and kind of preposition it. But right now, I've got. Uh, small or you back on the diagonal theme, it may eventually go on me, and then uh, Luke and I are going to probably put it on the row you. I've got Rulock bag number two on the Zenith handrail, the other point, and I got the transfer red in place, and then dash back to me. So I think we're, I think we're pretty well set. And I have Luke and my view, and we'll be picking up PCA when they call for it. Okay. Arm up. We are in position hold. Luca, we're going to get set up now for a manual maneuver that will bring you station Nader about two meters. Handing over. Back in a minute. And the sun has set for the International Space Station. You can expect to see a sunrise in about 33 minutes. Currently, the space station is flying over China, and astronauts are getting into their position to begin work on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer today. The KU antenna? Yeah, the KU antenna. I'm trying to keep the satellite. I hope that uh, GoPro is, is tracking that. Really cool. Hey, Luca, starting motion, two meters, station Nader. Copy. Because I have two very bright stars. Uh, one is so bright, probably looks like a planet. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? What is it? Break, break. We need to treat this as a GCA. Got good eyes on you. Okay, Luca, this is the published position. Copy. It's a good starting point. And if you, uh, from here, um, if you're ready for GCA, I would like to go towards my right about 80 centimeters. Okay, we copy, Luca, right 80 centimeters. Give us a minute, minute to get into our snapshot mode. Copy. And while we're waiting for them to, be, to get the snapshots, you can prep uh, and a counter. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to start coming over your way. Let's see, well, if we could hand off to each other if I were to stay here. This view from the helmet camera of Luca Parmitano, you can see he has made it to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That's the vacuum case right in front. Correct. Okay, and for Drew, the decreasing, decreasing clearance will be Luca's right shoulder to the Royu. 
Yeah, I've got good visibility of that. Okay, starting motion. Motion. Copy continuing. Copy. Just short of an hour of elapsed time on today's spacewalk. Astronauts moving into their final positions before beginning the power cable prep work, which is the first task for the day. Okay, take a look at uh, here. No, I have uh, identified uh, uh, the details. Now I need to get closer. So, uh, Jessica, I would like to go towards my feet about uh, 15 centimeters, one five. Okay, you want to go down about 15 centimeters, and Drew, the clearance we're concerned with there is the ingress aid to AMS. Yeah, one more time, Jess, it was a little ratty. Ingress aid to AMS. Ingress aid to AMS, okay, so Luke, we'll have to give that a pull. Yeah, yeah. Like, so okay. yeah. All right, and we're going straight towards your feet, and I think so when we look clear all around, Look at just the uh, right arm. If you put your right arm just straight down at your side, or yeah, on your yeah. I, I can see. I can see the clearance. Okay, from my view, there's still a wire tie. That's yeah. There you go. Is what? Yeah, I would just if you keep your arm right down there, you're not. You'll be clear of it. Yeah. I'm clear. I can see that. I can see everything. I, I I have no issues. I'm absolutely clear. Okay, I have the clearance, Jessica. Whenever you're ready, on Luca. Okay, copy that. I'm going to start that motion down 15 centimeters, and we'll also keep our eyes on the initial right shoulder to the row you as well. I got that. Motions and work. Motion. You can stop right there. Stop motion. He stopped motion. Okay, now body forward uh, about 30 centimeters. And I have the clearance, it's the radiator. I can see my clearance there, I can see it. And 30 centimeters will, uh, will work just fine. Drew, you also eyes on it. I do. Okay, copy that. We're going to bring you body in 30 centimeters, and again, the clearance will be the ingress aid. It's stuck in. Copy. Starting motion. Copy, stopping motion. Did you give me a concern for the clearance? I don't see any issues. Now, as long as we keep an eye on the uh, ingress aid to the radiator, that would be the only issue. Yep, I agree. Copy, Luca, that your GCA is complete, and we will leave the brakes off unless you tell us otherwise. Um, scope, the state of this, currently, I'm not going to be parking any boats. Okay, we copy and concur. Hey, Drew, I'm ready for the... Dino or Lancer? For the Dino. dino. Start with that one first. I'm going to pass your red. Yeah, do you want to take I'll one take at a it. time or the adjustable with both? Um, the, uh, no, give me, give me one at a time if you don't mind. Okay. Don't mind. All right, you guys are well on task here. So the first cut is just for the power cables. We're only expecting to cut three only. And uh, you're welcome to use the dyno. We are expecting you to use the Lancer on this one. I'm going to try to capture the lacing uh, weed. Uh, it, lo it looks like it, it, it will work just fine. Okay, I'm ready to the, to the dyno cutters.
Now that Parmitano has arrived at the work site, he will make a small cut along the upper beam to expose the power cables underneath, and those cables will be what eventually powers the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Nice work, Luca. We're done, one down. Going for gold today. Capturing all the little pieces. We just to confirm the diagonal beam handrail, I know that the tether point is not legit for uh, local tethering, but the diagonal beam handrail itself is. Hey, firm, Drew. Okay, so that's where I'm tethered right now. He's tethered. Drew, next thing for you is a zip tie cutter. One hour into today's spacewalk, astronaut Luca Parmentano is cutting the lacing cord along the upper beam, and he will next use the zip tie cutter. That'll help him remove the cable bundle from underneath the beam. This is the first task for today's Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalk. And being the International Space Station, AMS is truly an international effort. The team includes about 600 physicists uh, from, con from 16 countries around the world. And it was all built at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, also known as CERN, just outside of Geneva, Switzerland. Swap. I'll give you these one in, and I'll get the zip tie cutter. Okay. Does it uh, look like we expected? Uh, well, I, I don't have a great view right now. I, I think he does. And just a reminder, Luca, we are only cutting three right now just to help you manage the MLI. But if it, you don't have the visibility you want, we're going to be opening that MLI up anyway for the MAD install. So you you can do more cutting if you want. Thank you. It's uh, working what I have right now. Okay. And Stay on plan. You're right back to you. Right, and then uh, zip tie cover. Yep. I should have just kept you right. Mm. I'm ready to it. You're ready to it.
A great view from Parmitano's helmet camera as he uses the zip tie cutter we mentioned earlier was developed by the students from Lone Star College SciFair. He is currently using that zip tie cutter to remove the cable bundle from the beam. Cut but not release. Yeah, he's cut. He's cut, but uh, could use uh, the final cutter uh, grasping point, maybe. Yeah. It, it dropped in size, so if A different one. Yes. Keep an eye on it. Okay, of course. Wow. Right. There he goes. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. No worries there. We're just as happy to let it go than have you grabbing onto it. Oh, I definitely am catching it by the cut edge. teams on the ground confirmed that a lost zip tie is of no major concern as Luca Parmitano continues to work using the zip tie cutter to remove the power cables from the upper beam. The rest of stuff is back down in there. All right. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan is at the ready, you can see in the top right hand corner of your screen, with a trash bag that obviously allows objects in, but traps them there, and they cannot escape back out. There is no space insert the head of the cutter. Uh, Jessica, can I get a little bit of your positioning? I need another, uh, another five to ten centimeters towards my feet. Okay, copy, Luca, five centimeters down, and Drew, again, that will be the Ingress A to AMS. Okay, copy. Motion. Continue How does that look? Continue to five. Another five, Luca? Yep. Okay. 
Got a motion. Motion stopped. In the GCA. Copy, GCA complete. Parmitano speaking with Jessica Mir, astronaut currently aboard the space station who's commanding the Canada Arm 2 to help him maneuver perfectly in place as he works to release this power cable, the first task of the day. It's a done. It's a four cut now, correct? Yes, sir. Coming up on an hour and 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, Luca Parmentano is using the zip tie cutter tool to release about eight zip ties in this area. Things are progressing smoothly throughout this morning's spacewalk. And after this bundle of cables is released, he'll remove caps from the two cable connectors, then mate those cables to some spacewalk cables using the same technique as he did to remove the caps. Luca, just a reminder that this is one option of cutting them. We can just go to cutting the heads off um, if, if you're having trouble getting access, getting the tool because they're so tight. I think I'm going to open up the MMI a little more. I think I'm going to uh, Sounds good. see these three, these three over here. Because it's uh, pretty hard access. So yeah. I'm going to need again the, the data counter. Yeah. And do you want to keep the zip tie cutter with you? No, just keep the zip tie cutter. Okay. Post your arrest. Thank you. I might have to land, please. Okay. Just the reason. The head of the Icarus. Yes. Uh, 
Um, you want to trade and whatever you've got ready to the lamp, uh, sign out for the Lancer here. Hold on. All right. Uh, five, or are we going to get past that now? You said that the external ones are okay to touch? Yeah, that's right. The external ones, not for loads, but light loads. It's the middle one that has a cable running down at Luca that we want to avoid. Okay. I'm going to try to answer this. Is, okay. It's just uh, to a wheel beat down there. So um, I'm going to give up the down card for now. Okay. Almost an hour and 16 minutes into the spacewalk, the space station has just flown past the west of the Hawaiian Islands. NASA ast or ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano, who you can see his helmet camera view here, designated by the number 11 in the bottom right-hand corner, continues to work to free some power cables from an upper beam. These cables will eventually route power from the station to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Trying to use the Lancer on the zip tie itself? Yeah, on the zip tie. Yeah, we're fine with that, Luca. Obviously, you're going to be careful not to cut the cable itself. Have a, uh, can... uh, you can use the dyno cutters on just the head of the zip tie if you have access, but we're fine with what you're doing. We trust okay. you. Yeah, the problem, the, the problem is the access. Yeah, I get what you mean. You know, Luke, I guess we were expecting that bundle to kind of pull out already after you undid that zip tie at the front. Um, but are, the, is there, are there zip ties at the back that are holding it in? Yeah, there's a couple of zip ties. There are two deep dives that are holding you back. They are wrapped around the two the two couples and went to the structure. And so I just don't have enough things. Maybe maybe now. Yeah. Okay, Luca. No problem. I mean, we're we're doing good on time today, so just keep working through it. Give us your best suggestions on how to proceed, but we're happy with how things are going. We expected these to be a challenge. Somebody tucked them away, thinking they would never be used again. Be sure it did a great job. I'm sure there's an element of pride when they heard you say that. Yeah, yeah, they did a great job pushing them away. It's uh, as tight as they, they are going to be.
Kirche. You can't hear it, Luca, but every time one of those things comes out, you, every time you get one, there's a cheer here in MCC. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I have the cable. All right, good work. I do, I'm going to give you back to the dance, the dancer and uh, the big tech hunter. Okay, so you want, the, you want the Lancer back to me? Yeah, it's a wieldy, so I, I just don't worry about me. Yep. If you don't mind. Yep, and... Uh, and the zip tie cutter you're going to keep? No, I'll pass it, on, I'll pass it to you also. Okay, so answer. So I'm going to need uh, a small U-bag. Yep, accessible. Okay, it's on my ret. Here's your ret, so I'm not putting anything new on here for you. Let's, well, let's, let's give me the, I'll send this back to you. Give the zip tie cutter to me. An hour and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, and the astronauts are receiving their tasks from the ground today, uh, specifically from Ground IV, Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jeremy Hansen, who trained extensively on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer tasks. Back to you. I have to back. Okay, Jeremy, back to you. Saw you checking your gloves, Luca, how they look. Uh, no damage, no deltas. Okay, I assume your half is dry. I'll be dry. Thank you. All right, uh, while you're just standing by there, a reminder or a caution about only turning the collar on those wire connectors. We can see them sitting in front of you, so we're in good shape. Okay. Now the easy part, right, Luca? If you, uh, What's that? I have A, B, A, B, B, 1. Okay. We'll just refer to the colors. Okay. So, so actually, what is A, B? I have a large small here, and that's for your temp stove, so a small or a U bag, wherever you'd like. And I have it still uh, tethered here to the diagonal beam handrail after you get it set. Okay, set. It's on the row you? It's set on the row you. Copy. I can release this red. Okay, the small or U bag is yours. There's a second red, small, small here if you want to use it. Okay. Yep. All right, Luca, the connector tool you need is in that small ORU bag. And the sun's coming up here shortly. Bobby, thank you. Bobby. Parmentano is going to use that connector tool to remove caps from two of the cables that we just saw. 
He'll then mate the power cable using that same tool to the cables that were taken out on this spacewalk. Uh, that's right. You're aware at all. Oh. I'm going to start with the red and black cable. Okay, Luca. And I know you uh, know how to do this, so we'll watch in your WVS. And uh, we, what do you guys think of? I could go after some of these lacing cords on this lower edge here that we're going to need to take out for the mat. Right here, look at what you think. Uh, if you want to do that, sure. Get ahead, sure. Sounds like a plan. I'm checking, Drew. Okay, we're fine with that, Drew. Copy. I'll back off though if I'm in your way, Luke. Okay, the cable is uncapped. Great work, Luca. Nicely done. And I, I see a good EMI band. No fog. It looks pristine. Okay, if you want to try, um, that was a black and red, I think. If you want to try J18, or you can remove both caps, up to you. I'll uh, go ahead and remove both caps. Okay, I have removed the second cap. Okay. Yeah. You see the EMI band is intact. Good uh, pins and, sorry, good so far and looks good. Okay, which one do you want to do first? Which color? Uh, let's, again, let's go back to the black and white. Uh, sorry, black and red, and I think you said J18. A firm. And Drew, this is where your hands might come in handy. Uh, could need a third set of hands. 
Just hold, hold these for a second for me. Yep. When I set up the... It turns out that they were using the small the locking electrical connector. It's too... Doesn't, doesn't have enough closing power if I put it horizontally. So I have to go vertically on it. It's very unstable. Okay, Luca. We're handing over in uh, 20 seconds, so you guys can get set up. Just make sure you check the, the pins on both sides of those cables before you made them, and we'll be back with you in about a minute. Yeah. Will do. Hey, Drew. I don't see the pins. Yep. About an hour and a half into today's spacewalk to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, and Luca Parmitano has removed two caps from the cable connectors uh, on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer by using the connector tool. He will begin to mate those two cables to the spacewalk cables, the white ones you saw, using the same technique. It's a tough task as these cables were really only meant to be handled with hands on earth, not wearing spacewalk gloves, but as you saw, Parmitano, with some help from Drew Morgan, was able to get the caps off, and uh, we will look forward to regaining video communication as he begins to mate the two cables the next task this morning. All right, we're back with you. Okay, I believe that A18 is connected to AD, black and red. That's awesome. All right, on to uh, the brown and white, J19. You guys, you guys see it? There's a good connection there. Yeah, I mean, we can't tell from here, Luca, but uh, it certainly looks the part. Okay, am I supposed to see a little blue button popping out of the color? So, Luca, there's a window on the connector, and you, you might be able to see the blue through that window. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, okay, but it doesn't pop up. Okay, there yeah, I see a little bit of blue. I don't see a full, a full blue, but about three quarters of the window. I just want to make sure that I've gone all the way. Well, why don't you just pull it a little bit closer to the WVS and uh, give us a little bit better look at that? Tell me where to guide it. Tiny bit up and closer if you can. Okay, hold it there for a moment, Luca. Okay, Luca, we, we're guessing a bit here on the ground, but we think that you need to go just a tiny bit further in the collar. We think there should be a full dot in the window. Does that make sense? That's what I thought. Parmitano continues to work to tighten the first cable to the spacewalk cable brought out today. I, I already felt the click.
Okay, I am a full dot and a selfie click. Okay, good work. Good work, Luca. Yes, I'll give you the view. Okay, that looks great, Luca. Nice job. On to J19. Parmitano now going to work to connect the next alpha magnetic spectrometer cable to the spacewalk cable. These cables will eventually eventually provide power from the station to the AMS. GoPro or close up photos of these cables. That'd be good. The connection will be fully complete on the third spacewalk when the upgraded tracker thermal pump system is brought out and attached to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. And you got good checks on those, Luca. You check, check for pins and FOD. Um, I'm not connecting yet. I'm just verifying the markings. Roger that. Standing by. Yeah, this is... Yeah, good pins. FOD. Get my band already verified. Okay, you're go for mate. I have a good mate, I have a full window, and I saw the click. Nicely done. Wow, you made that look easy today, Luca. Right. That was way different than I was expecting to see. Nice work there. All right, Drew, you get some uh, photos of that for us. Luca, you're moving on. We need a long wire tie on the power cables. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take so the put back the, the cable there here. Let me uh, up the connections a little bit. So I take the features first? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Right, you're good. Yep. yep. Okay, let me uh, walk up the bag and read the connections. And with both cables properly connected, NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan will be taking some pictures of the configuration for the ground to review later. Yeah, connector tool back in the small RU bag, and we're ready to inventory it uh, in a little bit here once we free up Drew. European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, whose helmet camera you are looking through right now, will use a wire tie to temporarily stow the cable for future use. I'm going to close the back for you and then you, you can enjoy. Yep, I'm going to take it back over to this handrail and then I'll. Okay. Good work, gents. Uh, we're an hour 40 into the EVA. Uh, our limiting consumable is battery at seven hours and 40, so we're doing good there. So great job. So big picture, Luca, we just need to temp stow that power cable and get the MLI sorted out so we can do the MAD install. I'm going to have to reposition the arm and myself for that. Okay. Okay, and uh, I have 
Just hook it and stand by while I get it. Get yep. to the handrail. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I release this little red. Okay, I have it on the handrail. You can release it. There you go. Okay, my bag. Okay. Hey, uh, Jeremy, I've still uh, rested the cable. I'm going to stay rested until I um, until I need these, these sites um, and the thing is worked out. So pushing this piece in the back inside the pocket, am I tied it somehow? Yeah, I mean, we're going to tighten that up or clean it up a little bit later. You just need to temp stow it out of your way. We're going to do the MLI for the MAD, and then we're going to use the wire tie that we put on those cables and to hold that MLI in the right place. Right now you want me to put some MLI, some wire tie on this cable? Down yeah, here? that's right. Right next to the connectors on the new cable. So on the side of the cable you just installed, you're going to Put a long wire tie on there. It works. Just over an hour and 41 minutes into today's spacewalk, Parmitano will install a wire tie to temporarily stow the cable and then begin preparing the worksite to install a mechanical attachment device, or as you've heard referred to this morning, MAD. Cutters or Lancer as required. Um, I assume you got some imagery already, and then uh, at some point here we can do that at bag inventory, but there's no rush there. Position for the or your bag inventory. No, Jeremy, I remember when you guys on the ground told me, hey, do you want to restage some wire ties on these cables? I said no. How do you feel about that choice? Best choice I ever made. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy, I'll over you back inventory when you're ready. Okay, so just let's make sure we can keep Luca moving. Make sure you got the dino cutters ready for him. And then, uh, not sure what you want to do about NAD or the MAD pre positioning at this point. But we're ready for your inventory when you are. Okay, copy. Let me uh, make sure that the cutters are available. I should be able to get to him, uh, get them to him when he's ready. Right on the out exterior of the small RU bag, you've got a large, small red, a small, small red. On the inside. And that is flat up. My head on the left side. Two reds attached to the tether point, and each red has adjustable one adjustable has 
Ice grips on one hook and the outer hook is empty. The other I have an adjustable connected to a, an EVA wipe with a wire tie and the blue connector tool. On the right side. Just stand by, Drew. Left. So, Luca, do you have what you need to keep you moving? I need uh, the. I need two things. Uh, my um, metal cutters and a trash bag. Okay. And I also need uh, a little bit of GTA. How much? Okay, Luca, you have the comm for GCA. Drew, you get the tools ready. Hey, Jessica. Uh, I need to, keep, uh, to go back towards my head at those 10 centimeters. Okay, copy that. We're going to go up 10 centimeters. And Drew, again, looking at the ingress aid to the AMS. Okay. Luca, I see you guys tucked in, it looks like. Here. Starting motion. Motion. There's your 10. Um, okay, I'll take that. Andrew, I'm ready for that. Hey, Dino Cutters. Hey, Dino Cutters. Is that JCA complete for now, Luca? JCA complete for now, yeah. Thank you. NASA astronaut Jessica Meir using the Canada Arm 2 to move Luca Parmitano into place for his next task today, installing the mechanical attachment device. As astronaut Drew Morgan reports the components of his tool bag to the ground. I'll be uh, able to get closer once I get the smaller U bag off me. I've got the trash bag available to reach each other. You're working right now, right? You're doing your, uh... Yeah. I just got a couple things to sell weed, and then I'm going to get rid of this bag. All right. What's up? No, I'm just... I want to figure out when it's a good time to trash the things, or... Why don't you finish your, uh... Well, maybe I can, I can just take the weed, but there's more, there's more trash bags. Yeah, the bag doesn't matter right now, Drew, so let's just keep going on the MLI. And uh, you can help him get the pieces in the trash bag, Drew, and then we'll come back to the ORU bag, unless you feel strongly about getting it done. I just need to, I'm just want to leave it here on the fish stringer. Hey, I got the first uh, piece of the line. Oh, uh, sorry, the first piece of. I'll be able to get closer now. I think that one came out. That's part of it, did. Do you have an available bayonet fitting on your on your chest? I think weed I was gonna suggest if I could uh, start to move the mat over this direction. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. You have that bayonet in there. This ret belongs to that. You can leave that, leave that in place, and then you can use this ret uh, to you. Okay. Just with all the swinging it back and forth. To prepare for installation of the MAD or mechanical attachment device, Parmitano is cutting a lacing cord to expose the upper beam to which the hardware will be attached. The mechanical attachment device will 
be attached to either side of the vacuum case and is ultimately where the upgraded tracker thermal pump system will be installed. That installation is scheduled to occur on the third spacewalk just a couple of weeks from now. You're getting good at, good at that, Luca. Get your stuff in your hands. I'd like to see you catch the next one with the dial cutters. It'd be like Karate Kid. Over an hour and 50 minutes into today's spacewalk, things continuing to proceed smoothly for Parmitano and Morgan, who are repairing the alpha magnetic spectrometer in this series of four spacewalks. We need the bad upper and lower connected by their adjustable and the diagonal beam handrail now. Okay, great. So once Luke is done there, he'll assess whether he needs to tie back the MOI or not, and then uh, we'll be installing the MAD. We need the PGT for that. And then uh, we can tackle that ORU bag if it's in your way. I got the PGT ready, the math in place. Lucas making that right. cuts now. I need a little bit of GCA. Hey, Jessica, whenever you can, I need uh, 15 centimeters towards my left and another hand towards my head. Okay, copy that, Luca. 15 left and then 10 up. I'll give you the left first. Copy. Starting motion. Jessica Mir moving Luca Parmitano into place to complete the next steps of the spacewalk. As you heard, he will use the PGT, or the pistol grip tool, to secure the mechanical attachment device by bolting it to the beam. And you concur, Luca, you still want that 10 up? Okay, here comes the motion. Clearance. And there's your stop. Perfect. GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. I could give you the other half of that smaller U bag now. Go. On the right side, there are two reps. Um, well, actually, one's a rep with a pit pin, a EVA wipe to a wire tie, an adjustable on that rep. The other rep has the uh, terminator on it. Right? And that looks like it. 
Okay, Drew. That's a good bag. You can close that up. Small RU bag is closed. It's on the fish stringer right now. I've got it on post number one. Copy, Drew. And Luca, just a reminder, we're okay with removing that vacuum case handrail if it's in your way. Okay. Drew, I'll take a glove and half check from you. Dry. And I'm still watching that flap on the uh, right palm and the uh, start of a flap on the outer RTV, right ring finger uh, panel closest to my palm, back RTV underneath. Just the typical uh, denomination we've been saying that panel just happened but to not have started yet, but it started a little bit. There is there's something that's blocking this flap. I cannot tell what it is. I cannot see it. So do you have a view on it? Yeah, I mean, it looks like that area that we expected might be pinched behind the handrail. Um, oh, it's not pinched, though. And then maybe there's a, a tie just on the other side there um, that we're not seeing. Looks like it's the uh, only one standing between us and uh, freeing it up. Let's see. Put it closer. Parmitano continues to work to expose the upper beam where the mechanical attachment device will be installed. And Drew Morgan gives feedback to teams on the ground that his helmet absorption pad, or HAP, is dry and he's monitoring his gloves, making sure that there are no alarming uh, cuts to the gloves that would cause the crew members to have to go inside early. A bit of cutting to do? Yeah, three more. And that, yeah, okay. Um, I see them there now. Should be a couple more. Here. Um, weed as Luke is peeling this down, something I'm noticing is uh, we see some grounding wires, it looks like, on the surface of the beam where we'll be mounting the mat, tacked on tape in place, and looks like in most places. Yep, we're expecting those, Drew. We think they're going to be out of your way, but uh, if you feel differently, let us know.
two hours into today's spacewalk and things continue to proceed smoothly for the second spacewalk to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan and European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano working now to free up some space on a beam just outside the vacuum case of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, where they will later attach the mechanical attachment device, which will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system to be installed on the next spacewalk. So much as the, the way the wires are running, I don't know if that's, I, I would assume that would interfere with the mad mounting, so. Yep, we're talking about it, trying to decide whether we're gonna just move them out of the way or install over top. Those two there, those yep. holes, and then that should be it. That's right, Drew. Those are the next thing. Let's cut those out. Those are hard to capture. Placing cord. Doing pretty well. Okay, what do we do with this stuff? Uh, that's what they're talking about. Uh, so we'll figure out what we're going to do, whether we're going to pull right. over or so Luke and Drew, what we're talking about here is the one that's in the middle there that runs through the rivets, that probably shouldn't be an issue, but the one that's below it, you know, for you, down for you, next one down at the bottom. That one, there's a, we think the MAD's gonna make contact there. We think we gotta move that one out of the way without cutting it ideally. We'll just uh, peel the tape and try and move it out of the way. And to, to make sure that we're talking, yeah, this is our guess, yeah. So, yeah. He's on the right one. Take off. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. Okay. All right. Oh, this tape is really good. Yeah, Luca, it looks like uh, you're in good shape there. We think that will probably do it. So uh, that's a good starting position. Let's see if we can get the mat on. We go. Right here for us. And uh, you want the little guy? Yeah, I want the upper mat. Yeah, if I can. Uh, Make sure those those little grounding wires. Um, we're really gonna have to pull those back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have enough authority to do that. 
Um, hey, uh, what do you think, Luca? That piece of cap on tape in the center of the river, mm -hmm. do you think there's enough slack that if we undid those that we could move all of those grounding wires out to the side? I'm going to just do that. I'm going to put them all over here. Okay, we're good with that plan. Okay, we'll that was the slack. next suggestion. So if you think that's best, just go for it now. I think so. I think we'll have the slack to relocate them. But uh, you said the consequences of one of these wires was to get pulled. Uh, how, how significant is that? No, it's not significant. We, uh, we're okay with actually cutting them if we have to, but this is the gold standard if we can keep them intact. Okay, we're going for the gold. Here you go. Lengthen this uh, adjustable in between so that you can have a little more play. Right. Okay. All right. What is in position? Those wires feel like they're out of the way? Yeah, I think so. All right. Now we're going to manage that, that adjustable so that it's... Okay, there's a couple of things that we'd like to get rid of before we attempt this to... Okay. Because uh, you're going to have to pass in a PGT soon. Yeah, so why don't we like that? What we could do is let's put the trash bag over here on the, on the handrail, but since we won't need to be messing with that a whole lot. Yeah. If you give me the ret yeah. for it. This is its ret. Okay. And okay, it's ready to the vacuum tube. Okay. Camera. Okay. Luca, during this transfer, you can grab me a glove and half check at some point. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. Right, trash bag. Okay, um, Jamie, I, I love some discoloration. It's done away with Captain K. Other than that, I have no doubt that all the RTDs in good shape, best glove, no doubt Okay, copy. And dry half, correct? I have to, when you can, I would also be, like to get rid of this. What's that? It's uh, my dinosaur dino cutters. Yeah. Okay. Dino cutters, let me find a home for that. You're not a good moment, Drew. Again, no, no, we're, let's, we're gonna, we wanna make uh, you as freed up as possible, so. Yeah. Thank you. Two hours and nine minutes into today's spacewalk, NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan and European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano are working to install the mechanical attachment device to a beam just outside the vacuum case of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. And then the last thing is, um, you have a place for the PGP if I hand it to you. This is it. The pair have been stepping smoothly through the procedures this morning, first by mating power cables that were uh, previously attached to the station and part of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Eventually, on the third spacewalk, these will be mated with the um, upgraded thermal tracker system and uh, will provide power from the station to the alpha magnetic spectrometer itself. We'll put it on the, on the hand drill. Okay, you have a red on it? I have a red on it. Okay, and the red is released. Okay. Your PGT. Yep. It's going on to this. 
working years. Okay, so you can already see that that adjustable there is going to want to be a problem. Yeah, I'm going to throw away some of Okay, um, we need to do these ones. Okay, um, so just double check me here so the adjustable is still going to the little guy. Okay. Yeah, but he's on the wrong side of the little guy. A good picture from Parmitano's helmet camera of the lower MAD mechanical attachment device. And I think what we should do is put a separate red on the little guy and get the uh, adjustable out of the picture. Oh, there you go, there you go, okay. there it is. There it is. There you go. You can see the eight bolts that will need to be tightened using the PGT or the pistol grip tool to attach this to the beam outside of the oppomagnetic spectrometer's vacuum case. This is just me bumping on you here while I get into the picture. So let's um, that and lock it out. Okay, you're looking for an Alpha there. Six clockwise two after the Cal Luca. Alpha Six clockwise two. Okay. Luke, what I wanted to do is see if I can get on this other camera and not be in your way. How's this? Okay. Uh, you're, you're a little bit in my way, but, uh... You're also in the way of my view, Drew, but that's okay. No. Okay, I have a good cow. Back to water. Okay, those are good settings. Um, I was following along. It seems like you guys have done a good verification. We got no RETs or MLI uh, trapped in there. We don't want to have to undo these bolts once we start. And I don't have a good eye on the adjustable loop. Are you comfortable that it's not trapped? Okay, the adjustable is free. I see a yeah, it's going to be hard to take out, but it should be free. Okay, so you have back in the red. I see the the uh, well. You think we don't? We have to hook going the wrong way on it. No, it's, no the hook is the right way. It's just going to be hard to take out because it's it's away from me. Okay. It's the only way they will come out. Okay. Okay, I don't think, I don't think that this is an orange. So. All right, we'll start these bolts, four turns each. I got one in. Let's put the opposite one on the aftermath, the lower mat. Yeah, so good idea. Three. Okay, let's look at four. Oh, they both are in. Yep, I see. Okay, let's see this one here. Yep. This one is eight. eight. This one is one. Oh, 
right. Number four. That's number four, or uh, bolt four. Two hours and 15 minutes into the spacewalk, Parmitano using the pistol grip tool to secure the mechanical attachment device to the beam near the vacuum case of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. More push. Teams on the ground continuing to monitor the spacewalk as it proceeds smoothly this morning. Astronauts having prepared a power cable uh, that will be connected on the next spacewalk between the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer and the station. They're currently installing the mechanical attachment device that will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system, also to be installed on the next spacewalk. Four. Okay, I think we got. Uh, we have. Uh, Four on uh, all eight both. Okay, your go to drive to torque uh, requests you uh, do a bit of a star pattern as you torque them. Copy, will do. Uh, Study me both to one and then we'll go to four and three eight and so on. Okay, sounds good, Luca. And I'm going to try and I'm gonna see if I can do. It's uh, alpha. Seven or alpha six? Alpha six. Do you have alpha six on your? Um, checking on my checklist. With alpha six on my check cup checklist, yeah. Okay, cool. Alpha six. How about that? Um, See if I have the right version of the, of the checklist. And uh, actually, before I do that, um, confirm that at this point my uh, I can release my rights from the the red. Hey, hey, Farmer Luca, you can do that. Maybe give it a good pull test before uh, before you release. Yeah, it's got your speech there. Okay, starting. Okay, you're expecting uh, somewhere between 11 and 16 turns on the upper and lower bolts. Total turns. Okay, that was uh, two turns on the on number one, and the two light, three light, and eight point two. Okay, and how many turns did you just add? I missed that. I added three. Okay, and how accurate do you think your initial turn count of four could have been higher? Higher, probably. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I verify that we were uh, we were up above four on most. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going for four. I got the zero counter, so uh, this one was about five. I got. One turn and 8.1 green light. Okay, copy, Luca. And uh, I mean, from what it, what we can see in the video, it sounds seems like these bolts are behaving very well, smooth uh, running torque, etc. Yeah, they are. And 
Parmentano and Morgan confirming that the lower MAD is installed. All eight of those bolts have secured it to the beam near the vacuum case. Attached it up to the MAD, so let me do that. Okay, Luca. Your red is off. The original red is on the diagonal beam handle. Yes, sir. I have an adjustable here that came from the MAD. Okay, stand by. Pretty much. Jeremy, uh, okay, so confirm again the instruction. Uh, you want the MLI that wraps around onto itself to be wrapped onto the straps? Yeah, not the MLI itself. So what we want to do is secure that cable bundle that you created earlier somehow. And what we're going to do is ML or use the wire tie to the strut, the forward strut. And then at the same time, you could put that wire tie around that bit of MLI just to make sure that we, we keep it neat and tidy for when we bring the pump box out next EVA. But that's really up to your discretion. Okay. Okay, but the MLI, does he, does he need to go, he doesn't go back to beam. 
No. We don't really need to worry about the MLI so much except for ensuring it covers up the cable that you just installed and won't interfere with our pump box install. That's it. Yeah, and the last question is, keep talking about the forward strut, but um, for me it's more like left and right. Yeah, let me just look at that one last time because you're upside down for me. And uh, as long as it's not the middle strut, that's fine, Luca. You know, I use the white tie to tie the cable to the original cables that are still be tied inside the, the pocket, and they're pretty stable. So I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know that I can reach either strut from here. I could white tie to the to the base of the. Good wire tie if you want to the lower, to the upper mad. Is that a good compromise? Yeah, we think that's fine, Luca. Remember, the goal here really is just to keep the cables covered by the MLI and the MLI under control. So it sounds like what you're suggesting works. And Luca, I can explain that a little better. So it's the cables that you pulled out and where the connection is that we're trying to protect, but obviously the, the end of the cable that you installed today has to come out. It's going to end up on the row you. Right. That one is already time stowed. And the connection that I made between the old cables and the new cables is under the MLI, much as as much as possible, I mean, and now it's wire tied onto the low the upper mat. Luke and Drew, we're handing over in 25 seconds. And Luke, I think I heard you say you've already got the other end of the cable stem, temp stowed on the on the row U, so we have enough lengths to connect to the pump box. Yes, I, I would say that. Uh, okay, we're handing over. I'll be back. Parmitano wrapping up the installation of the MAD, the mechanical attachment device, and moving on to covering a cable that was recently attached earlier in the spacewalk under the MLI, which stands for multi-layer insulation. Bend over, probably. Sorry, say that again, Luca. You mean? You should have a WDS view of uh Yeah, it's still connecting. We'll have it here in a moment. It's going to be my uh, weed that adjustable that was on the mat is now in Kluak back to Copy, Drew. Spacewalk clock now at two hours and 30 minutes. Parmitano is taking some pictures of the work site. Yeah, we have video. After closing out things here, he will move up towards the same work site he was at in the first spacewalk. We just need to hear your, your viewpoint on it and we're ready to move on. 
think it, I think it's a uh, video uh, config it is going to be this may be um I might have to reconfigure this when I get here later on. See if I can um I'm sure it's in a better yeah. In a better place up here. So you have a wire tie there from the last DVA, right, with the data cable, and you're putting it in with it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put it on top of the volume. On the previous CDA, I couldn't get up there. Yeah, that sounds good. Not that I can. We just want to make sure we're ready when we bring the pump box out to just slide it right on in with no issues. I understand. I want to do the same thing. This view from Parmitano's helmet camera, marked number 11 in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, shows him stowing the cable he worked with earlier. This cable will eventually provide power to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. I believe we're done with uh, Kulak back 2 for a little bit, is that right? Let me double check. Next time we need Kulak back 2 is at the NATO worksite, Drew. Well, you guys see that now I have a good storing location for the the cables. Okay. Okay, right on top of the row, you. All right, that's good, Luca. Okay, the air is clean, and I'm ready for the next uh, DCA then, for the next actually uh, motion. Yep, that's it, Luca. Over to the VSB. Okay, we copy that, Luca. So we are finished up this work site. That's everybody. Unit work site complete. Okay. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is bring you back to that starting position. So we'll take out all those inputs that we previously put in. The first thing I'm going to do is bring you body out about 30 centimeters. Copy. Okay. Break. Break. I got one more thing for you, Luca and Jessica, before you move. Luca, we just want to confirm, since we didn't get a good uh, a good turn count on all those bolts, I just want to verify that we uh, got them driven past the black line on all of the bolts. I can verify that the black line is not visible on any of the bolts. Okay. Good words. Your go, Jessica and Luca, for your GCA. Okay, copy that, and Drew, a reminder that you have all clearances for Luca, shoulder to the row, you, ingress aid to the AMS, and any clearances in the area. Okay, copy, and uh, tell me our first direction. The first motion is going to be body out. 
everybody out. And starting motion. Motion. After ensuring all of the bolts are in their proper position to secure the MAD, the mechanical attachment device, to the beam near the vacuum case, Parmitano is now moving again on the Canada Arm 2, controlled by NASA's Jessica Meir, who's inside the space station, to the next work site. It's the same work site he was at in the first spacewalk. Okay, now we're going to bring you body up. It's going to be really small and put only about five centimeters. Copy and stopping there. Now we're going to bring you body left. It'll be about 40 centimeters. Parmitano's next task, a very important one. He'll be cutting the current CO2 line that has been cooling the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That's a six millimeter tube. Once he cuts that line, it will permanently disable the cooling system on the old tracker thermal control system. And now we're going to switch modes back to, to ISACs and then we're going to be bringing you station Zenith about two meters. So we'll bring, be bringing you away from the work site. Jeremy, how are we doing on the timeline? So we're uh, two hours, 30 minutes in. We're still good on consumables for full EVA, and uh, we just, we're pretty close to the timeline right now, just slightly behind. Hey, Luca, are you ready for that motion about two meters Zenith? I am ready. Okay, starting motion. Motion. Copy, continuing. Be clear, please. Copy, Drew, thanks. coming up on two hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk. A little recap of the things that the astronauts have accomplished so far. First, they prepared the power cable that will eventually provide power to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That will be connected on the next spacewalk. They just completed installing the mechanical attachment device. That will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system also to be installed on the next spacewalk. Your handrail, and I've got the tool board out on the handrail as well. Jessica Mir is moving Luca Parmitano into place by using the Canada Arm 2, where his next step will be to cut the current tube in which carbon dioxide is flowing to cool the AMS. When convenient, I'll take a glove and a half from both of you. For the drug test, here's mine. My gloves are for deltas. Uh, both left and right gloves are in good condition. For deltas and half is right. Copy, Luca. I weed my uh, half is dry and no deltas from previous. On the gloves and an eye on those areas. Okay, Luca, we're going to start this joke cast now, bringing you to that AMS common 3.5 minutes. Copy. Any motion? 
All right, Drew. Another thing to stage is the cutting guides on that diagonal beam handrail. As the crew moves into place and prepares for their next task, we are still taking Ask NASA questions. So if you're on Twitter, just use the hashtag AskNASA and submit your question. This one comes from Tyler, who wants to know more about the SAFER system and how it works. SAFER is attached to the suit. It actually stands for the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. It's a compressed and nitrogen-powered backpack that allows a crew member to move on his or her own independently from the space station. We hope to never see it used because it's primarily intended for use if a spacewalker becomes detached from the station and needs to maneuver back. Another question from Stacy, who wants to know why the signal sometimes cuts off during the spacewalk video coverage. We are in communication with the International Space Station through something called TDRIS. That's the Tracking Data Relay Satellite System. There are two types of communication with the station. That's video and audio. And every now and then, the space station hands over from one satellite to another, to another. And these changes in satellites are tracked by teams on the ground, so we know when we will uh, lose communication with the station and when we will regain it. Set up position hold. We'll get set up for the next show cast. Another Ask NASA question, this one from Mary, who asks about the equipment and if it's made to be able to be used with the gloves the astronauts are wearing. They are a little bit bulkier to work with than normal human hands, and to help astronauts work in those bulky gloves, the suit is pressurized to about 4.3 pounds per square inch. The tools are special, uh, specially designed to allow crew members to use them more easily, taking into account that it is more difficult to work while wearing those gloves.
That's not a fake pay pass for this, Luca. It's two hours and 45 minutes since the spacewalkers switched their suits to internal battery power, marking the beginning of the spacewalk. Since then, we've seen them work the power cable, uh, connecting it to the cables brought out on this spacewalk, and that will eventually power the alpha magnetic spectrometer. They also completed installing the mechanical attachment device that will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system. But the real surgery of these spacewalks comes next when Parmitano will cut the current tube in which carbon dioxide is flowing to cool the alpha magnetic spectrometer. And this will vent any CO2 that is in the tube and also permanently disable the current cooling system on AMS. Following that, he will move to the vertical support beam area where he will even more carefully cut six of the eight stainless steel tubes we'll see cut today. Those will be connected to the cooling system on the next spacewalk. We'll see the astronauts really take their time as they move into these tasks to make sure they're cutting the correct tubes and doing everything properly to make it easier for the next spacewalk. Luca, we're ready for the next show cast. This will be 1.5 minutes. Ready. Motion. All right, Luca, we're in position hold and give us one minute. We were going to set up now for a manual maneuver. Copy, we'll see there is a GCA and it's the published position that we figured out last week. Actually, before that position, we're going to do one manual position and then a single joint maneuver, and then we'll be able to snapshot and get you back to that other position. So a few more to go. A few. Okay, and Jessica, for your awareness, the thing I'm watching right now is Look at my boot plate again, like when we came in here before, so I'm keeping a close eye on this. Copy. Okay, Luca, this is going to bring you station forward about a meter. Copy. Ready for motion? Ready for motion. Okay. Sue, so you'll call the stop early as needed. Okay, Luca, you see what I'm talking about here? Yeah, I see it. Motion. Stopping motion.
much further are you going? Did you intend to go? We had about 30 centimeters remaining in that direction. 30 centimeters in this direction. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to yaw the boot plate. Copy. As the astronauts move into place for the depressurization cut of the current CO2 line, we have an Ask and Ask a question from Gwen, who asks about how long they trained for this spacewalk. These spacewalks have been in the works for over four years now, uh, with over 20 tools, uh, special tools being developed so that the astronauts could safely complete the task today. The astronauts themselves have had seven sessions in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory dedicated only to these alpha magnetic spectrometer spacewalks. To the right helps. Um, going to continue 30 centimeters in the direction you were going. Confirm that would be station forward, so bringing Luca up. So in his body coordinate, that would be up. Confirm. Okay. Okay, starting motion. Continue. Luca, do we have a go to start? You have a go. Uh, Luca, redirect your right light to my. What? That light is going in my eyes. I can't see. There we go. Continue. Okay. Motion. Motion stop. Okay, we're okay. We would require to go further. It'll just require to lean, lean, lean left. Drew, we don't need to go any further. We're within tolerance from the published there, so we're going to get set up for the next the single joint maneuver. Okay, copy. Okay, Marty's pitch. What's that, Luca? The motion is going to be a pitch, correct? Confirm. This is going to be bringing you towards the work site. Pitch okay. down and body in. Okay. Okay, copy, and that's the position. Okay. Luca, now we're going to bring it into the snapshot mode, and then we will do that series of inputs to get you to the position that you want. We will give you guys, we'll let you know each step of the way what we're doing, but we'll need a minute to get set up. Even though Parmitano was only coming to the other side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer, it takes quite a bit of time for the Candid Arm 2 to maneuver him there because Mir has to make delicate and detailed uh, movements for the arm to position him in the proper place. Do you have the rock cutter? Okay, Luca. So we still have one, uh, uh, one robotic maneuver defined in position. Copy.
right, Luca, the first maneuver is going to be a roll to your right of 15 degrees. Go ahead. And for you, Drew, the clearance is going to be Luca and the APFR to the row you. Roll to the right and his eight plate to the row you. Copy. Okay, starting motion. Copy continuing. Good clearance. Copy. Ten degrees to go. Completes the first input. Now we're going to be bringing you body right. Drew, for you, the clearance we're going to be looking at is Luca to the AMS. Body right, copy, and uh, it'll be a little bit me. How far is this one going to be? This is going to be 32 centimeters. Okay, copy. Stand by, Luca. We're going to assess the clearance. Copy. three hours into today's spacewalk, and this is a view from the helmet camera of Andrew Morgan, number 18, down in the right-hand corner. You can see ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano in his field of view as the astronauts prepare for their next task to cut the current line that's pumping CO2 through alpha magnetic spectrometer, allowing it to cool. We are within tolerance. Okay, we're, yeah, it was into my uh, boot plate there. Okay, stand by, Drew Luca. Be by. You know what are we studying by for? 
Yeah, Luca, we just needed to check with Robo about the order for this table since there's some cross coupling in the arm right now. Okay. Is expected, but we just wanted to double check that we were all on the same page. It sounds like we are. So the next motion is going to be coming up, and that's going to be about 20. That's going to be 20 centimeters. Okay, copy. And Drew, for you, this is when the wrist and the boot plate clearance to the Royu. Wrist and boot plate to the Royu. Copy. Continuing. Good clearance. Okay, there's the position. We're going to do another maneuver to roll to your right, and this will be about another 15 degrees. Okay, copy. Drew, a reminder here that that will be the Luca and the ACFR to the row you. Luca and the ACFR to the row you, copy. Okay, starting motion. Jessica Muir moving Luca Parmitano into the position where he'll be able to reach that six millimeter tube he will cut with the rough cutter. And this will permanently disable the cooling system on the old tracker thermal control system for the alpha magnetic spectrometer. After cutting this line, it will vent any existing CO2 in the system. And then the team will move on to cut eight more stainless steel tubes that will eventually be connected to the cooling system that will be installed on the next spacewalk. Okay, Drew and Luca, now we're going to be pitching you down, and that will be a so any clearances that you have, we will take Drew. Most of the main clearance decreasing are going to be ours. Copy. Starting motion, pitch down. Good motion, good clearance. Continuing. Okay, that completes that motion, and the last one we're going to see is body in, and that's going to be about 25 centimeters. I'll be ready. I'm sorry about that distance, Luke. That's going to be actually more than that. Okay, that's what I was going for more. Ready. Okay, starting motion, and it will be more like 60 centimeters. Copy. And uh, Drew, this is still Luca to AMS. Copy, look at the AMS. Luke has got uh, the row you off to his left side, and he's got it in, in sight. I'm going to lose sight of the row you here shortly. All right, all right. Grab it. Okay, starting motion. Motion.
a quick satellite handover as the astronauts maneuver into their position for the next task. You see, they have to uh, see the cutting guys are uh, off the diagonal beam there. They're, they're tucked a little bit underneath it, but that's where they're retracted to. Yeah, I see my identifier here for the defense. And uh, whenever you have you can give me a go, uh, Jeremy, I'm, I'm ready for the defense cut. Okay, warning. Don't put anything in the rough cutter jaws. You don't want to cut, i.e., EV2. And you are go to cut the six millimeter fill port. Okay, so here's the rough cutter. The uh, lock is in place. Parmentano has just received the go to use the rough cutter, which you can see here from his helmet camera, to cut the six millimeter tube and disable the cooling system on the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Okay, the defense cut is uh, complete, verified at uh, the pressure done. Here's the data. Okay, we're checking that on our end. You can pass that back, the rough cutter back to Drew. It goes back on the, the tool board. And now we're in that 10-minute hold. And good news, uh, Luca, we see the pressure dropping, so it's a good cut. You cut copy. And do you uh, do you see any visual indications or any uh, debris? Did anything sneak out of the MLI? I don't see any debris. Okay. Take another glove and half check from both of you here. Um, no deltas on my gloves. Left, right, and right half. That's dry, no deltas. Okay, going forward today, we're back in this area where we've got some sharp edges we need to watch out for. Obviously, the cut tube ends and then the nut plates on the IPA and the VSB, the backsides. We talked about them last EVA. Okay, next thing is the two polar to Luca. And with that, Parmitano has cut the current cooling tube, permanently disabling the cooling system on the old tracker thermal control system on the alpha magnetic spectrometer. The astronauts are now moving into very detailed and specific procedures as they move to cut six of the eight tubes we'll see cut today. These are housed in the vertical support beam. We saw the cover for the VSB removed on the previous spacewalk and jettisoned into space, putting the astronauts in a good configuration for the work to be done today. That caps are available. So, Luca, once we get through this dwell time, hopefully we'll, we'll get verification prior to 10 minutes, then we'll be going in there to identify the tubes. So you're going to open up the MLI, protect the ribbon cable, and then uh, we'll be going to the Nader side, Nader Tube 7. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, 
giving the indication that, yes, indeed, pressure has begun to drop in that CO2 line. So show me a right-hand comfortable position where you could uh, put a hand up or down. Think of that. Think of that. That's good. Yeah. I think these will be better. Okay. Like that. Okay, yeah. Andrew, get a glove, glove and half check from you. Uh, uh, sorry, Drew. Dry and no filters to my glove. Sorry, Drew, I missed uh, yours somehow. Half checks are free. So they were saying we, we need at least another three minutes until we're going to know, and uh, at most we're going to be waiting another five and a half minutes. Reminder that uh, it's 18 inches that you need to maintain, so if you can reach the Zenith side, you're welcome to do that. You uh, start, start to retrieving the... Yeah, so long as you can stay uh, away from the Nader side by 18 inches, you're welcome to open up the MLI. Okay. Parmentano is opening up the multi-layer insulation and giving us a look at the tubes he will be cutting today. He'll cut six in this area and then move to the nadir side or the earth-facing side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer and cut another two. So These will later be connected to the upgraded so thermal tracking okay. pump got, uh, system on Spacewalk 3. Done, ones we are concerned about and the next one is another area of uh, significant focus for us. We got a good plan and we got the time to do this right once. So that's what we'll do. Yeah, definitely we'll do it right and only once. Drew, looking ahead, uh, vice grips. Uh, or the next thing we're going to need after caps. Copy vice scripts and uh, back to A firm. The area is uh, opened up. Since none of these spacewalks were ever planned uh, because there was no expectation for the AMS to have more than a three-year lifetime, none of the tubes the astronauts are cutting today were labeled. However, teams on the ground have developed a way to label them to ensure the astronauts cut the right lines in the right places. The crew members will use cutting guides, which you can see in Parmitano's right hand. At least so uh, thought. Parmitano will place that tube cutting guide over the tubes. The green numbers show him which tubes to cut. Red are not to be cut, and black will be cut, but in a different area. He will then use the tube puller to do exactly that, pull the tubes away from one another to cut them, and then he'll carefully cut the six stainless steel tubes in this area. He'll install caps on the upper tubes to cover sharp edges and help identify them later before eventually moving to the next three tubes to cut and cap. 
once that's completed in this area, they'll move over to the back side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer and do the same thing with the next two tubes. Okay, we still haven't heard yet, Luca. We're waiting another two minutes. Extraordinary patience required. Jeremy, I don't know anything else better to do today than this. Yeah, no doubt. Well, we got well, we got a moment to kill. Um, if you're enjoying the use of your tools, it's not EB2's birthday today, but it is a Drew's birthday. Drew Hood's birthday is today. Which one? Drew Hood from the team. Oh, oh, a very happy birthday, Dad. We'll be using these tools very soon. Happy birthday to another Drew. I'm sure he's smiling. What's the status? Okay, Drew, or Luca, the, the uh, 10 minutes has passed. We're just getting a final go here. teams on the ground waiting to hear from the AMS team that the tubes are, the CO2 is fully vented from the station before moving on to cutting six of the eight tubes we'll see cut today here in this location. I just want you to understand, we still got pressure in the system, so we may have to pause before we actually do the rough cut, but we'll start moving ahead and get ready for it. So we're identifying Nader upper tube seven. Go ahead. Okay. I have the major upper tube guide onto the tubes. The arrow is pointing to the vacuum case. Number seven is the second from vacuum case. It's green, and it's the first up from the middle. Okay. Towards the vacuum case. All right. Those are good words. And I see the native guide on the native side. Okay, so when I stole it like this, like that. Before I pull it, I want to identify again. A major upper. Again, uh, it's the second from the vacuum case. First was the vacuum case from the middle. Okay. Good words, Luca. You can pull that tube. So pull. Parmitano identifying and pulling away the first tube that will be cut. Okay, I'm removing the guide because it's interfering with the cutting. And I have eyes on it. Drew, I'm ready for the rough cutter. Copy. Yeah. 
Okay, and we're going to just pause here. We're going to pause here for a second, Luca. So do whatever you need to do to make sure we stay identified on the correct tube. Okay, I have the tube that I identified and pulled in my site. It's the second from the vacuum case. I confirm, and it's uh, one up, one towards the vacuum case from the middle, also four from the uh, uh, from the bottom. And I can see by looking at the spacer as well that that is the one that, is, that you have pulled. Okay. Good words. We're not cutting yet just because we still have pressure in the system. It is decreasing, but we're just giving it a little bit more time. Because there's still CO2 in the system, astronauts will be holding on making their first rough cut, but the first tube has been identified, and you can see Luca has lifted it out. Luca Parmentano has lifted it out from amongst the other tubes to identify which one will be cut first. After these tubes are rough cut today and capped, Parmitano and Morgan will venture out on the next spacewalk to smooth cut the same tools and eventually swage them or splice them to connect the new flex line to the existing alpha magnetic spectrometer line. Two pull, Luca. Right on. Okay, Luca and Drew, I want to give you the big picture here. Um, we are depressing, but a lot slower than we anticipated. And so at this stage, we still believe we have liquid that's boiling off. So we're thinking about making a second cut to try and speed it up. But at the current rate, we're thinking it might be 20 minutes before we get the pressure down. So give us a second here, and then uh, we may do a second cut. Copy. Copy, send me by. Okay, Luke and Drew, so we're going to dig into the MLI where we just did the rough cut, and then uh, we're going to grab on to it with the vice grips, sorry, where we just did the depress cut, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably end up getting the vice grips in there and doing a second cut. So the next step is opening MLI. So dyno cutters or Lancer to Luca. So it's a second gap to a second location. 
It'll be in the same location, Luca. I'm still getting clear on where that second cut is going to be, and then I'll give it to you. Well, this cut, Clint, I want your arm over the uh, red for the cutter. And uh, I'll get you cutting implements. What would be uh, your favorite? I'm a cutter. I know. Audrey. It's um, not on a red to you. Okay, stand by, Luca. So we're, uh, we're talking about a few different options here, but I think the latest option they're talking to right now does not need, we don't need to open that MLI. So give me another minute here. Okay, spare me by. Teams on the ground are working to find another way to more rapidly vent the CO2 that's currently flowing through AMS. It is venting just a little bit slower than expected, and they want to hold off on cutting any additional tubes until that CO2 is fully vented from the system. So it comes out of the tray and goes into the same place that you just made the, uh, the depressed cut. It comes out, if I understand correctly, at a 90-degree angle. It is wrapped in MLI. It's right here. I can give you the view with the WDS. Right here. Yeah, that's the right one, Luca. So how do you feel about cutting that one without removing MLI? Are you good with that? I can do it, but... Um I just want to be 100% sure. I mean, number one, am I not switching into it? Yeah, you will be, Luca, but not on this side. This is the dead side. We'd be switching into the other side of it. Okay. And uh, I'm happy to cut. You can uh, give it that view then. That did you have, weed? Yeah, put the rough cutters on it. I'm going to ask the ground team one more time before you snip it. Yeah, out in position. Okay. All right, that's it, Luca. Cut it. All right, I have a go. and cutting another tube to continue venting that CO2, which you actually saw just a little bit coming out of the alpha magnetic spectrometer's cooling system. So we think we're getting closer. Okay. Three and a half hours into today's spacewalk. Next task for the astronauts, once this CO2 level has dropped from the current cooling system, will be to cut six tubes in the vertical support beam area. We're not going to have to cut MLI or the vice grips just yet, although vice grips are coming soon anyway.
Okay, the, the new estimate with that additional cut is four to five more minutes. Four, two, five, copy. Parmentano will hold off for another four or five minutes as we wait for the CO2 to completely vent from the current cooling system on the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is now permanently disabled. Hey, Luke, I'm curious about uh, that sharp edge we just created where we cut that tube. What are your thoughts on it? No issue. Sorry, no issue, is that what you said? Okay, great, thank you. Still mostly covered by end of line, so it's really not an issue. Yeah, perfect, Luca. Thanks. Luca, well, we got a couple more minutes. One of our get-aheads today was to investigate the routing or the routing for um, two and four tubes, two and four, down to the NATO worksite in, in behind the TTCB. So, if you wanted to throw your camera back in there and uh, and just investigate how hard it's going to be to route those tubes down there, it's going to be very easy because I can see the NATO site in the tubes from here and Drew. We'll be able to uh, to toss them pretty easily. So I'll, uh, yeah, stick. Uh, you want to stick my GoPro down there? Take sure. a couple features from here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Get a picture of it. I know the team would be excited to use it and then draw on it and send it back up to you guys later. My GoPro too. As they wait for the pressure in the CO2 uh, cooling pipes to continue to drop, Parmentano is going to check out the next work site just by simply looking, no moving yet, where the next two tubes will be cut. In the last three and a half hours, the astronauts have prepared the power cable that will eventually provide power to the alpha magnetic spectrometer as well as they've installed the mechanical attachment device, which will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system to be installed on the next spacewalk. We just saw them make two cuts to the current tube in which carbon dioxide was flowing to cool the AMS, and that system is now permanently disabled after venting the existing CO2. For the steady wheel, that one. Wait, oh wow, right in there, okay, yeah, nice. Amazing. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we just, uh, we make mental note of all the potential little tangles and snarls that uh, just randomly happen. So I got us some pretty good ones already, we. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. What's the status, Jamie? Yeah, we're just getting an update right now.
Okay, Luca, we're over halfway down, another four or five minutes. And I'm kidding. We we think another, another two minutes, hopefully, uh, we'll be there. Okay, copy. From Andrew Morgan's helmet camera, you can see those caps floating off to the left, and those are what will be put on top of the tubes once they've been rough cut by Parmitano. Capping the tubes will protect the astronauts from the sharp edges after they've been rough cut. They'll also help identify the tubes for the next spacewalk when the astronauts return to swage them or splice them to the upgraded tracker thermal pump system. It's the second from the DSD, and she's the fourth one from, sorry, it's the second from the vacuum case. From the bottom of the VSD, it's the fourth one, and it's pulled out. Okay, and I see you are on the Nader side. We need to cut that one on the Nader side. I'm waiting for a final go. All right, we're waiting for the final go. I'm not going to put the uh, rough cutters on it until, I'm ready, until you guys give me the go. Luca, do you feel like you got enough pull on it to get a, a safe fight? Okay. The most spectacular background, Drew. Yeah. Yep. Back to it. Okay, Luca. Yeah. Read the, re identify the tube one last time and cut it. Okay. Yeah. Can you give me go to, to cut it? Well, I'll say the words one more time and then I'll give you the final go. Okay, uh, the tube that I pulled is the second from the button case, and it's the fourth from the bottom of the DSP. And it's on the Nader side. I can confirm we're on the Nader side. Do I have a go? Luca, you are a go. That's the correct tube. Okay. It's cut. It comes to rough cutter. Rough comes back to me. And Parmitano has made the first cut of eight today. We'll see six in this area and then two on the other side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. I clear the shot. I control the shot. I have to I control the shark, I need the cap. That's an IC7. Copy, cup 7. 
Uh, I have Sammy in my head. I don't have Sammy in my head. Okay, comes again. Yeah, seven. Seven. Morgan passing over cap number seven to Parmitano. That allows him to cover the sharp edge and also labels the tube for future identification. Okay. You can the rest. You can just bring it back to me. Okay, good work, Luca. Next tube is Nader Upper One. Nader Upper One. Copy, retrieving the guide. Okay, major opportunities. I have the arrow pointing to the vacuum case. The major upper one is the one. So I have one empty black, one red. And the easiest way to identify one is the second from the bottom of the VSB. Also one down from one away from the vacuum case in the middle. Yeah, Luca, I heard you say one down from the middle, four down from the vacuum case. Just confirming that for the ground team, and that's the tube to pull. Okay. Do you want to reverse it? Reverse it. Please, so that I can, I can pull it. Right. I'm going to go to the same reading. I have red, empty, black. In red, one and two, two, three, four from the from the vacuum case, one down from the middle, one away from the middle. Everybody concurs? Good words, Luca. You can pull that tube. Okay, I'm pulling. Yeah, identify the tube by eyes on it. Parmitano using the cutting guides to be super specific okay, the on which line. tube he'll Please be cutting. Give numbers to me again and we'll give you a go. I've got it. Sorry. I have the rough cutter. On track teams, one down from the middle, port in the vacuum case. Okay, your go to cut on the Nader side. Nader side, confirmed. Oops. And uh, the question for safety, do, I, do we have to lock, fully lock the, um, the rust cutter every time, or can we just put the lock on and uh, that will be sufficient? This is what we're trying to. So, now it's locked. Yeah, just a latch. That's it, Luca. You don't need to lock it. Just latch it. Okay. All right. It's okay. latched. Copy. Thank you. Okay, and I have the tube that retrieving the tube puller at control of the sharp. And the second tube of six in this area cut by Parmitano. Cap one. Cap one. Right, P one. Everything in my hand. Installing the cap to cover that sharp edge and later identify the tube. Okay. The sharp is contained. I have a good pull test. And releasing the rest. Okay, now we're switching. We're going zenith now. Zenith upper tubes, tube five. Oh. 
Parmentano is moving to the other side of the tubes. It's the middle one in between one and seven. Good words. Okay, if that's identified, I can pull it without removing, without flipping, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull it. Okay, we concur. You are pulling the middle tube. Tube and, I'm, and I'm pulling it on the zenith side. Good words. will cut on the zenith side. Yep, we're in sync. Okay. Okay, Andrew, I, I'm sorry, I have the last cutter. Drew, next we need the vice grips time. and the cap. I have a one, two, middle one. And I'm cutting on the zero side. Hey, I can clear it inside. Here go. Go, go Luca. Okay. And the third tube is cut. Match. Four. Cap number five. Hey, I cap five in my hand. Parmentano is double and triple checking everything, relaying what he sees to teams on the ground to ensure that each tube he cuts is the right one. We're going to remove that middle spacer, and then it's, they're going back in crew lock bag two when we're done. I think I've got the vice grips available. Look, uh, looking at our tape and our witness mark, it looks like it's aligned. The hey, number five, it's small, it's the sharp. And I'm releasing. Okay, I have the transfer right back, and I'm putting the vice grip on it for you. Pull Talk test you. on five. Pull test on five. You can see Luca Parmatano conducting a pull test on these caps, which, which can best be described as sort of like finger traps. Because the tubes that he just cut are no longer round, they can't be removed once inserted into the cap. Okay, it's my grip. Good bite. Five. And good four. I retrieve the spacer. Damn ready to. I'm holding the trash bag so you can push it in. And with the removal of that metal spacer, he will cut three more tubes in this area. Three minute, three hours and 50 minutes into today's spacewalk. You see the beam is still there. Okay. All right, now we're going to Nader lower tubes. Tube six, Nader lower. Okay, let me specify what the injury means. The pin, it stayed within the DSD side of the... Okay, that's, that's good, Luca. Okay, so back to the Nader, Nader lower. I have the Nader lower, a team case pointing towards there. And let's see if... Okay. So, next one will be number six. Do number six cap? Copy. I see it's the second on the vacuum case. One, two, three. And it's the first one towards the vacuum case from the middle, which is number eight, which is black. Those are good words, Luca. Now this one I'm really going to hit because I want to get as close as possible. I'm going to reread the numbers. We like it. OK. 
Okay, I can still identify it is now a green fruit tree. And this is actually tube number six. I can see one, two, three, four, five tubes. And this one I'm pulling is the second from the vacuum case and one towards the vacuum case from the middle, which is number eight black. Good. That's good, Luca. You can pull that tube. Okay. I have the tube puller on it. And it's identified. Yeah, I'm ready with the ready for the oh, turn this up. I'm wondering if even if the sun is up, you're shaded enough you might be able to leave it up. Yeah, it might sometimes it not helps so. Okay, ready for the bus cutter. Okay. Tapping on the native side, and I can still identify the tube because it's raised. The old one. Other words, it's still the second for the vacuum case, and one for the vacuum case from the middle. Okay, Luca, you're going to cut that tube. Coming already sold up. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It's cut. Okay, good work, Luca. Was number six. We're going to be handing over in a minute. Drew, do you have the cap? That's you. Cap number six. I uh, control the sharp. Okay. Got sixes in my hands. Six in your hands. Shark is contained. Happy solve. Triple test. Okay, Luca, during the handover, you can identify Nader Lower 3. Nader Lower 3. Okay. Nader Lower Tubes. And a short satellite handover period. If you've been listening, you can hear how specific Parmitano is being when identifying which tubes he'll be cutting. He shares their location and distance from the vacuum case as well as how close they are from the middle tube. Once he gets the go from the ground team he then makes the cut. Four tubes have been cut so far in this location. There will be two more cut here in the vertical support beam area. Okay Luca, tell me about Nader Lower 3. Nader lower three is green and so starting from the vacuum case. One empty black eight and one more tube. So the one I'm gonna pull is identified by being the second from the bottom of the of the DSP. But it's also the one, two, three, four from the vacuum case. Just checking, Luca. Luca, call it down one more time. Right now, the easiest way for me is to start from the middle one, which is eight. It's black. And 
is one away from the vaccine case from that one. And it's also on the last one on the BSP, counting towards the vaccine case, it's the next one. Okay, Luca, you go to pull that tube. Two people identified and pulled to rest gathers. Okay. Gather. All right, read it to us one more time, Luca, and we'll give you the go. Okay, it's the tools one. It's one down, one down from the, from the middle one. And it's one up from the bottom from the last one. Luca, Luca, you are a go to cut that tube. Okay, and it's cut. Currently in a video handover for the International Space Station, but we do have audio communication with the crew. And because Luca has specific instructions on how to identify which tubes will be cut, he can still receive the go even when we don't have visual. Control of the shark. Control. You have cap number three, I see cap number three. Cap three. Shark is contained. Cap is installed. Okay, we're going to for release. We are going for Zenith lower tubes next. Tube eight. Today's spacewalk time approaching four hours, and Parmitano has cut five of the six stainless steel tubes that will need to be cut in this area. Jeremy, just for sanity check, on the major side, currently, on the upper tubes, I have tube cut, and I have one that I just uh, cut to the season number five, and I have a cut one, and I have a full tube. These are the upper tubes on the major side. Lower tubes, I have one full tube cut. Another full tube, cut, another full tube. Yep, that's what we expect. All right, great. So now I have bigger, lower tubes. It is lower. It's number eight. Firm? Hey, firm, Luca. Right, this one is easy. Uh, because it's the one right underneath the middle one, which is cut. What I see is red, on cool, empty space, eight, empty space, and red. So it's the middle one. Okay. That's right, Luca. You're go to pull that tube. 
Uh, we lost WVS, so just confirm you're on the Zenith side. I am on the Zenith side, and I agree. Uh, Zenith side uh, with the Zenith, uh, with the Zenith, Zenith guide. Yep, those are good words. And pull that tube. Okay, do I need to turn on my to uh, turn on my WDS or is it no, just uh, it's space to uh, space to grounds. Here's our cap eight. I need first. I need the rust cap. Here. Parmitano, identifying for teams on the ground the final tube in this area that will need to be cut. Identify one more time. It's the middle one on the zero side. Luca, that is correct. You are go to cut that tube. Okay, so keep the rough cutters there, Luca, and uh, you can do your cleanup now. Push uh, any remaining cut tube ends into the VSB. Uh, we're thinking for closeout photos. Maybe GoPro is best in this case, given the lighting. I'll leave that up to you. Drew, I'll take a glove and half check from you. Uh, Jeremy, before we do any of that, I'm going to read to cover this, this chart that I have. I have control of the shot, I need a cap. Yeah, that's the right and order. Uh, cap number eight. Cap eight. And control of the shot, rolling the cap. Okay, the cap is in, the shot is contained. Full test. Hey, do you want the rough cutter back for any uh, push, pushing down anything? Oh, I think I think they're all pretty, pretty good shape already. Okay, so Luca, we're going to hand over here. I'll be back in about a minute. You can go ahead and clean that up and take some photos. I'll be back in 30 seconds. We'll do, we'll do some video as well. And Parmitano has cut and capped six tubes in the vertical support beam area. Only two more tubes to cut on the other side of the AMS. But so far in the past four hours of today's spacewalk, the astronauts have accomplished several tasks. First off, preparing a power cable that will later provide power from the station to the alpha magnetic spectrometer. They then installed the mechanical attachment device, or MAD, which will eventually hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system, also to be installed on the next spacewalk. We recently saw the astronauts cut the current tube, which carbon dioxide was flowing through to cool the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That permanently disabled the cooling system and vented any existing CO2 from the system. dry, and my gloves are unchanged. Okay. I have no dusters on my gloves as well, and my hat is definitely dry. Okay, good words. Uh, next, we're going to be putting the long wire ties in. I wasn't sure, did you get uh, any close up photos yet? I took photos. Do you want video as well? Sure. I might take any video yet. Yeah, go, 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 go for it. Do a nice scan around. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Folks would be quite interested to see the cutting in there. So if we get a good GoPro scan, that'll help out. Astronauts will revisit this work site in the next spacewalk, where they will use a smooth cutter to cut these same tubes, and then they will swage them or splice them to the new upgraded tracker thermal pump system. Okay, Luca, long wire ties, three of them. Okay, you work. 
Drew, you can clean up the tube cutting guides if you have access, and then we're going to need the zip tie cutter uh, once we, we get on to the next steps. A zip tie cutter is uh, based on me. It's a ret on the diagonal beam handrail. Any reason that it needs to hang out any longer? I didn't think so from what I recall. Negative, Drew. You can put it away. The next bag we're going to get into is crew log bag three for an inventory uh, when uh, time permits. Copy. Next task for the astronauts is to close out this work site and ensure everything is thermally protected and in a good configuration for the third spacewalk currently scheduled for December 2nd. In just a moment, we'll see Parmitano use the zip tie cutter once again to cut the lacing cord on the scrunchies, which are right below the caps that have been installed on the tubes. Yeah, as long as you got the zip tie cutter accessible, we can get into that inventory. Zip tie cutter is accessible. All right, black back three. The exterior of that a large, small, a small, small, that, and on the inside we've got, now I have the cutting guides on an integral ret with the adjustable between them, uh, and I also have that ret that was originally on the mat now connected to that adjustable, so it's, it's going to stay here in crew lock factory, so it's got an extra ret. two caps today if we need them. Big picture, Luca and Drew, we're uh, four hours and ten minutes in. We definitely uh, moved through the, uh, the rough cut uh, at, a, at a good pace, so we're on timeline to get everything accomplished today. We're just going to have to keep moving efficiently. Sorry, Luca, that was unreadable. Say again. The confirmation that we are currently being currently delimited only by the battery. That's correct, Luca. I lose 
Lee left the, the white ties, and then I will get the lily ties when it's re when I'm ready for uh, hey firm. Uh, to close up the burrito. So now you need the zip tie cutter, and we'll start uh, working that. We probably want access to the two polar to help get the scrunchies in, and uh, potentially the tape if you're going to use that. I'll put it on the transfer rack. You should be able to use this then. Okay. Okay, first the rack. You yeah, have a, you want to give me the two puller already? You want two puller? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start from the ceiling side. Parmentano is currently using the zip tie cutter to cut the lacing cord on what are called scrunchies. These scrunchies will be pushed down into the vertical support beam area in order to protect the tubes thermally so they aren't overexposed because these will be the same tubes that will be connected to the new upgraded tracker thermal pump system on the next spacewalk. So, Luca, I know you're probably already thinking this, but I just want to remind you this is where you don't want to put any bends in the tube for the next EVA. These scrunchies are not English. I think that one doesn't look like it expanded. It did not. So Luca did one side not let go. If you uh, maybe just grab the other side with a two polar and give it a yank, it might might free it up. Yeah, it looks like you're doing the right thing there, Luca. Yeah, let's hope the other ones uh, work a little easier for you.
remind me, you only want me to cut black side, confirm. Since it's even released, can I cut, can I completely cut the lacing? So you just need to cut the black on both sides, and I'll check here, but I understood that you can, cutting more is also okay, but let me double check. So the only thing you don't want to cut is those loops that you used last time to expand it. Tedious task. <laughs> Only four more to go. <laughs> As Parmitano works to cut these uh, scrunchy cords and move them down into what's being called the burrito of multi-layer insulation at the base of the tubes, we have a question from Isaac. He wants to know if the stainless steel tubes will be welded back together after they were cut today. These tubes won't be welded back together, but it's not the last time we will see them. On the next spacewalk, uh, Parmitano and Morgan will revisit this work site to smooth cut the tool and then swage them together, which is connecting them to the new flex line, uh, which is part of the existing alpha magnetic spectrometer line. almost four hours and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. Astronauts are closing out the work at this site. Make sure we pull that clear. There you go, perfect, perfect, yes, yes. Now is probably a good time to just recage our brains. The, the primary purpose here is to make sure we have no tube to tube contact. We, uh, and I can see Luke has got him nice down, pushed down and down and deep, and we're, uh, he's making an adjustment on the MOI right now, make sure that they can be pushed down all the way. Um, so we, do you just want us to do three on the Zenith side then? No, oh, I have to do four, but I'm going to do last thing in a second. Okay. I'd say yank on that top flap MOI too, just because it's folded back on itself there and it may be preventing them from getting all the way down in there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's, it's, it's dangerous though. Again? Yeah, it is dangerous I don't want it to push, push it away. Okay. Luca, what you're doing is looking good. We're not looking for perfection here. As long as those main priorities of tube-to-tube -tube contact are taken care of, we're in good shape. After Parmitano completes the tasks at this work site and ensures none of the tubes are touching each other, 
Jessica Mir will move him again using the Canada Arm 2 all the way to the next work site, which is just the other side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. They'll continue cutting the tubes there, finishing off the last two to be cut today. Yeah, I'm gonna get a piece of tape for this one. Okay. How about right here? Which Zero. one? Serial number 10. With, uh, Serial number 10. With, uh, with uh, Ken Bolwick's name on it. Ken Bolwick, Serial number 10. Feeds. And Ken Bolwick, Serial number 10, is going there. Well, it's in place. Again, the FII, we have uh, the serial numbers, every single piece of tape that we looped. And then we have some names. And the first one that was used today was Ken. Tape in honor of the teammates. I like it. It's awesome. What is. Um where does the uh, ribbon cable end up in the, in that burrito? Um, just for my understanding. Right here. Just around it. Okay. Very good. Uh, I just I just put it the eye. Can you see it? I'll put GoPro on it here. Yeah, we saw where you were pointing to it. That's great. Okay. Let me close it to the middle one. And Luca, I, I know you'll be happy to hear that we're still getting good data on AMS, so the ribbon cable is in good shape. I'm very happy to hear it. Thank you. Is it side cutter? Side cutter. All right, here we go. As we approach the four and a half hour mark in today's spacewalk, you can see all of the scrunchies have been deployed on the tubes on the left side of your screen. Parmentano will now move over and complete the next couple to finish out this work site. Drew, I'm curious how you'd feel about doing the closeout photos while uh, Luca was on his way to the Nader work site. Would that work? Yes. Okay, let's plan on it. 
The next things that you'll be staging, Drew, not right now because you're helping Luca, is a small ORU bag and a tube clip. Small ORU bag, uh, just so that I can hand it off to Luca at the next site. Is that right? That's it. Okay, and uh, we'd up. I'll take a reminder on the small ORU bag staging. Um, Luke is moving. I don't want to put that in his workspace right now, but uh, I'll get the two clip in a better position now. Okay, and I'll remind you about the bag later. That'd be great. Taking on this piece of tape. Okay. And Luca and Drew, for both of you, uh, just remember that extra cut on that tube one, just while you're working around that area. Luca, for you right now, and Drew, when you do go in there for the closeout photos. Okay. Hey, do I ever go to just push it into itself? Like that? Way? Right. Stay away from the shark, that way it's a little easier. I have you on the shark, just pulling it away. That's good. Okay, Luca. Yeah, we probably prefer you don't touch it, but we trust you. Okay, which one is it going to be? Uh, this this one right here, number 15, has uh, Tim Ur Urban Tame on it. Are you able to get that, this tab right here? Which one? Number 15 with uh, Tim Number Ur 15, Team Urban. Urban. Team Tim. Urban. What else? Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, this is the Team Urban. He's going to choose number 5 to hold down. We're almost done here. I have one more wire tie to get a little tighter. That'll be it. For, uh, you tie that one down, Luca. I think you could use the two cooler to push on Cap 5's uh, sleeve a little bit more. You can go down a couple more inches for sure. There we go, yeah. And the thing that's preventing it is that top lip of the MLI. I know if you pull on that top lip of the MLI, it's going to back it out for a second, but I think we're, in the end we're going to get that push down there a little further like you have. That's it. Okay. We're real happy with yeah. the way that burrito works. It looks just as is. And so cinch that last wire tie and we'll get you moving. Uh, there we go. So 
uh, we, what do I need to make sure Luca has on him for the um, for his next movement? I take the zip back out of from him. Yeah. And uh, and that's the two puller. Yeah, you can take those. And the first thing he's going to use when he gets there is the lancer. But probably better for you to just hand it to him at the work site. Here's the last view of uh, my WVS. It's a good view, Luca. We like what we see. So uh, we'll let Drew get the closeout photos. We'd like to get you moving on the robotics right away. I'm ready. Drew, right back to you. Anything else you got to give me, Luke? Uh, no. Uh, okay, copy that, Luca. We are going to basically do a reverse of that whole pattern to get you out of the current of the current position. So we're going to start with a THC out, so a negative X maneuver to take you away. Copy all, and you'll go. I'm clear. I can clear myself, and I'm completely clear. Okay, copy. And Drew will have you call off on any clearances if it if it's not looking good. Copy. As the spacewalk clock reaches four and a half hours, a good look at the work site, which the astronauts will revisit on the third spacewalk in this series. The astronauts have accomplished several major tasks today. First, preparing the power cable that will route power from the station to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer and installing the MAD, or the mechanical attachment device, that will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system. In this worksite, we saw the duo cut the tube in which carbon dioxide was flowing to cool the alpha magnetic spectrometer. To pitch you back. After all of the CO2 vented from that system, Parmitano began cutting six stainless steel tubes in this area. After cutting and capping the tubes, the view we've got right now, he is on his way to the next worksite. This is the space in which the next two tubes will be cut and capped for access on the third spacewalk. Okay, Luca, this is going to be a roll to your left. Good. Okay, Luca, the next is going to be motion your body down. Good motion, good clearance. Good motion. And that completes that motion. This is going to be body left. Starting motion. And we're watching his shoulder to the row you. Copy. Fire. Copy. Copy. Okay, copy. That completes that motion, and I'm going to roll you again to the left. Okay, I'm clear. Luca, pull the uh, ingress aid in a bunch. Okay, 
Okay, starting motion roll left. As the astronauts move to the next workstation, we have a couple of more Ask NASA questions. If you're watching live, you can tweet them with the hashtag AskNASA. Anton wants to know if the International Space Station can move in space to avoid collisions. And we don't have any plans to deorbit the space station anytime soon. But we can avoid collisions and boost the space station's altitude by using thrusters on visiting vehicles and even some on the International Space Station. Teams on the ground track orbital debris very closely so that we know when to move the station or boost it in its orbit. Okay, Luca, and we're going to give you one more motion. The next question is from Teresa, who asks if the women giving instructions to the astronauts are engineers, mission specialists, or independent of NASA. The female voice you just heard is that of Jessica Meir. She is actually on board the space station right now and commanding the Canada Arm 2. This is a view from the helmet camera of ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano. He's at the end of the Canada Arm 2, and all day during this spacewalk, Meir has been moving him into position on the end of that arm. Switch and shoot a couple from your from your angle there. Luca, take a glove and half check. Okay, no, uh, no deltas on the glove. Left. You know, a really good look at the right, right, and on the shorts. I see no deltas on the on either glove, and then can I have a good half right. My half is dry as well, and my gloves are uh, no deltas. Um, okay, from your angle yeah. with the camera, can you shoot a couple right there while we're waiting for them to mode? Okay, Luca, we are ready for this single joint maneuver if you are basically going to be moving you away from the work site. Ready to you are. Okay, starting motion. You can see from Parmitano's helmet camera, which you can tell is his by the number 11 in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, he took some pictures of the work site as he departs this side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which you can see the vacuum case right there. He's now headed to the nadir side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, that's the Earth-facing side, to cut another two tubes. Okay, and that is position hold there. Okay, Drew, let me know when you're done with closeout photos. Copy, I'm trying to do it in between GCA's or into your, into your left, same back. Okay, Luca, the next maneuver is going to bring you station aft about a meter. Copy, station aft. Starting motion. Clearance is good to go.
completes that motion, Luca, we're going to now go into the first series of Joe Cassis. Okay, big picture, we're four hours, 43 minutes in. We're good on consumables for a full EVA, and, uh, but given the amount of time we have to protect on the back end for the robotics to get Luca back, we are right on timeline. So we've got to stay right on it, on top of it, if we're going to get uh, the plan task done today. Copy. Copy. We do know that. You don't have to be pressurized anymore. Okay, Luca, I'm going to start motion on this Joe cast in 2.5 minutes. Copy, 2.5 minutes, Joe cast. And it will be 1.5 minutes only, actually. Good matter. Okay, Luca, that's the position hold here. We're going to load the next joke out. Luca, this next show cast will be two minutes in course. Ready for motion? I'm ready for motion. Ready for motion. Four hours and 46 minutes into today's spacewalk, you can see astronaut Luca Parmitano on the end of the Canada Arm 2 being moved into place by NASA astronaut Jessica Meir. To give you some perspective on the size of the International Space Station, from end to end it's about the same size as a football field, including the end zones.
Although Parmitano wasn't going a very far distance, it takes extremely precise robotic work for the Canada Arm 2 to move him to exactly where he needs to be on the alpha magnetic spectrometer. And just for your essay, we're handing over here in 20 seconds. We'll be back in a minute. We've got another Ask NASA question coming from James, who wants to know if Luca is working on the same thing as the last spacewalk, his students notice that it looks pretty similar. And the answer is, in a way, yes. All of these spacewalks, uh, this series of four, are to repair the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which has been on the station for the last eight and a half years and collected data on over 140 billion cosmic ray events, keying us into things like antimatter and dark matter in space. So far today, the astronauts have prepared a power cable that will route power from the station to the alpha magnetic spectrometer and attach the device that will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system, which will be used to cool the alpha magnetic spectrometer. They've just cut the current tube uh, that was flowing using carbon dioxide to cool the AMS, as well as cut six other stainless steel tubes that will eventually be connected to the upgraded thermal system. So yes, in a way, this is the same kind of work that was performed on the first spacewalk in the same area. On the first spacewalk, we saw the astronauts jettison a debris shield as well as the vertical support beam cover that was on top of the work site Parmitano and Morgan have just departed. So Drew, let's make sure we're on the same page. You've got the tube clip ready and the small where are you bag. Uh, did you want to stage that now or you want to come back to that later? I got the small where are you bag staged. I have all the tools staged. I've got the tube clip staged. Okay, and uh, Lancer is one of those all the tools staged? Uh, so I have crew lock back two available with all cutting implements available and I have the two tube caps. Everything is uh, reachable. Okay. It sounds like we've pretty much got everything we can do done. As we head into the lower work site, uh, the caution we got to remind ourselves of you know, the sensitive areas of AMS, so avoiding loads into the UMA cables and contact with those cables on the forward side of the radiator crates. Can lean back, look at me I'm at your head, lean back. Communicating with astronauts from the ground today is Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jeremy Hansen, who has also trained extensively on these alpha magnetic spectrometer spacewalks. He just reminded the crew that they'll be working in a very sensitive area for the next tasks to cut the next two tubes, and they'll also revisit this work site in the next spacewalk. So they're going to take their time and understand the robotics it takes to get them to this area, as well as better understand the work site itself. One of you in the target, you have not earth in the back. All right, Lisa, that is position hold there. We're going to get set up for a manual maneuver. Okay, I can see my, my sight there. I 
you, would you see next, or do uh, you want to attach your little pieces, or do we... I think we should uh, go with the Lancer. I think, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think you're going to get better reach. Yeah. I, can, I can see the T that you're going to cut. Okay, good. Always deep is one with the Lancer. You know, let me know when you're ready and I'll stop yapping. Okay, copy that, Luca. We are ready, and Drew, you'll be assisting with clearances as always. This is going to be two maneuvers. First, I'm going to bring you station Nader about 30 centimeters. Then I will bring you station forward a little over a meter. Copy. You go. Okay, copy that. Uh, here comes the Nader motion. Okay, that's the first maneuver. Now I'm going to bring you station forward a little over a meter. Motion. Copy, continuing. Okay, Luca, this is the published position for now. Then we will take you into snapshot mode for any further GCA. I'm ready for snapshot mode and GCA. Okay, Luca, so let me talk about this real quick with you. So you see the UMA cables there? The UMA is yeah. great. So I don't think you're going to be able to go head up anymore unless you come a little bit left. Okay, I plan to go, plan to go 5 centimeters left. It is 10 centimeters up. Lean forward, and then go forward. I like it. Okay, Luca, we are set up. What does it look like you need? Okay, I need uh, 10 centimeters left. Okay, copy, 10 centimeters left. Emotion. Emotion. Good motion, good clearance. That's your 10. Yes, that's good enough. Uh, now I would like 20 centi uh, 15 centimeters towards my head, up. Copy, 15 centimeters head up. Drew, please watch clearances to AMS. You, you said 1-5, 15, correct? 1-5. Okay. Yep, 1-5. Okay, we've got 15 head up. Five, starting motion. Motion. Is 
through 15. How's that look? That looks great. Now, can you to pitch down about uh, 30 degrees? Pitch down 30 degrees. Starting motion pitch down. Copy. Motion. I'll be continuing. Got it, yep. Clear. Okay, stop motion, we're assessing clearances. Yeah, we started to see some, uh, looked like there was motion away, kind of paradoxical, like uh, not pitching. Is that what you can give me? Can you at least take me body forward? Hey, my Luca. Hey, my. As astronauts approach the five-hour mark in today's spacewalk, the third to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, NASA astronaut Jessica Mir continues to move ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano into place at the end of the Canada Arm 2, just below the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer itself. Okay, Luca, we're going to continue with your pitch down. Okay, copy. Once Parmitano arrives at this work site, he will open the multi-layer insulation and install a tube clip to support the other sensitive AMS hardware. Copy. Clearance. He'll then cut the two stainless steel tubes, the last two that we will see cut today. Copy, stopping motion, and that was 15. Okay, and if it was good, now I need the body in about 30 centimeters. Okay, copy, body in. Drew, you'll watch his clearance. Roger. Okay, Luca, starting motion. Copy. And what was your estimate distance? 30. Copy. Give a good lean back so we can get forward away. Here's your 30. All right, there will be some motion and uh, B breaks on. Okay, Luca, breaks are coming on. Complete. I think in the name of efficiency, let's just keep this me if you can. Yeah. Sure. Good work. Copy, breaks on. Okay, good work, uh, all of you. So let's get to opening up a little bit of MLI. Over here. 
Yeah, I, I think I'll catch what comes yeah. up. Never mind, he's already left. Yeah, they are. Uh, Yeah, Luca, that cable right there is one of the ones be real careful not to bump it. So I know you got to work in that area. Just want to remind you. Yeah, no, I know that's the. That is the. My office, I understand, but I need to cut it open first. That is why it's not work. Doing good, that's already the vertical part of the seat done. How far up do I go, Jerry? Uh, halfway up. So right there should be the Velcro patch where that kind of double uh, MOI thread is. And then you have to cut that one that you got your right thumb on and then another Velcro patch above it. Yeah, you got it. It's perfect. As Parmitano works in this area and receives reminders from the ground about the delicacy of this work site, it's important to remember the difficulty of these spacewalks. They were never really intended to happen as the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a cosmic ray and particle detector, was only expected to have a lifetime of three years. Eight and a half years later, it has detected over 140 billion cosmic ray events. And these spacewalks will help extend the lifetime of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer after the new cooling system is installed. So maybe cut away from those if you can, that cable, Luca. Uh, overcome by events, disregard. Good work, Luca. Just to be clear, everyone's real happy with what they see. We're just talking out loud just in case it's helpful. So at this point, Luca, it's really just what you need to get the job done. 
So you've cut most of what we were expecting you to cut. All right, Drew, ready for the chip on for the, the clip. Yep. Two more here. On the right side, we just go as far as that uh, the, uh, cable. Is that right? Okay. I think that was it. As far right as you need to. I want to see the bracket. Should be able to wrap it. Need one more. This view is from the helmet camera of Luca Parmitano, who is moving out of the way some mylar, exposing the tubes below. He will install a tube clip and then begin to cut the next two stainless steel tubes, the last of the eight we will see cut today. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. Okay, next, Luca, we're going to try to scrunch the mylar. Send it back to me. Do we put the Do we put the you might, clip first? You no, we put the clip after. You might need to uh, use the lancer to get the mylar moving. We're not sure, so don't let it go too far. I'll hold it until you see you so. The tube, uh, the, the, can you have access to the uh, tube puller? Tube puller? Yeah. Oh. Two Pretty well. There we go. There we go. Not wrapped. It is scrunching really nicely. Yep, they wrapped that perfectly for us. That's great. Okay, next is the clip. Let's get that thing installed. Piece of tape. You want a tape? Yeah, piece of tape. That's that one, serial number eight. It's got Heather Bergman's name on it. Serial number eight, Heather Bergman. Heather Bergman is helping us the scrunch. Because All right. the clip, I think we need to cut this one. Good work, Heather. Do you have a, probably the lancer here? Yeah, not the lancer. Give me the down of cover here. Luca, would you mind trying the, to to install the tube clip before you cut that? Are you convinced? 
I'll take that as a no. Sorry, guys. I could see it. It's no, it's no problem. But you gave us a good laugh down here, so it's perfect. Okay, hang on, Luca. We're, it's one hole to the left. Go here. Yeah, that one. You guys are still receiving data from the cable. Okay, short wire tie uh, around that tube clip. Actually, just a real question, Jeremy. Do you, do you guys know if that cable go about? Uh, if it's so good. So far, we've got uh, good data in AMS. We're, we're keeping an eye on it. Okay. Parmitano has just placed a tube clip, which he's going to secure with a wire tie before moving on to cut the two cables you can see. Just like the previous tubes we saw cut earlier under the vertical support beam area, he'll also install tube caps to cover the sharp edges and later identify which tube is which. Almost, almost none. I mean, like, maybe get five more centimeters. Drew, the next thing is the rough cutters. Luca, pop quiz, I got a warning here. What's the rule of thumb for the rough cutters? You were actually working? I get it. What's the rule of thumb for the rough cutters? Something you can't put in there. <laughs> exactly. You pass. All right, and then we got a monitor uh, clearance to cut tubes when we're installing the, the caps. We're going to use the rough cutter to cut both tubes in four. Tube four is the one with uh, multiple bends in it. Drew, after rough cutters, we need the caps. Okay, these tubes. 
must look very much like they have moved before. And I'm thinking that this one here is tip four. Yeah, that's that would be my guess. And this one is tip two. Yeah. All right, Drew. Luke, is the one that you think is tube four closest to you? Yes. Yeah, you're right. That's tube four. One that I'm cutting right now. You go to cut, Luca. Okay, cut tube four. Fuller, you want me to cut them both and then uh, do them, or? It's really up to you, Luca, but typically we did cut them both. Okay, then I'm going to cut them both. I do use, use the latch. Okay. You want the fuller? Or are you going to? Yeah, I want the fuller. Fuller. And uh, cut. That's, um, number. Yeah. Top two actually. The control of the sharp. Okay, and you still have eyes on which is which there? Yes. I'm gonna do two first. Okay. This is cap two. Here you can just let the two fuller go. Here's cap two. I have cap two. And and four is gonna be attached to the adjustable since you're going to need it shortly. Approaching the 5 hour and 20 minute mark in today's spacewalk, Parmitano has just cut the two stainless steel tubes on the nadir side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Those are the last two rough cuts he'll make today, and he's now placing the caps on top to protect he and NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan from sharp edges, as well to identify those tubes. Number four. A good full test on two. Okay, excellent work. <laughs> I have two good pull tests. For two and four. Okay. We're happy with what we see. So now, uh, as you release those, we'll just tuck things back. Make sure the MLI is positioned to minimize mylar exposure. Yeah, Lucas, sorry, before you cover that up, let's grab a photo of, uh, of your handiwork. Drew, you're cleaning up the tool board, the tether from the cap. They're going back in crew lock bag three. And then we'll get uh, Luca, we're going to basically use a little bit of time we have left to do some uh, robotics translation to investigate how we're going to get to the MLI install position in the final EBA. Okay. I think that wraps up things down there. So, Luca, the next thing we want to do is move to your right and over to where you're going to have to wrap the MLI uh, connection around the strut on the side. So, your yeah. thoughts on that? I uh, 
meters to your right, and it'll just take a minute since we had breaks on. We're going to have to get back into mode. Copy. And by one before that motion, uh, we before I we take uh, Luca away from me, out of reach, do you think I should hand off the ORU bag? Yeah, it seems like a reasonable idea to me. Luca, are you ready for it? By a second, I have a rep coming. You have a red on it. I have a red on it. All right, I'm going to release this red from the handrail. Say the bag is yours. It is mine. Does it have a large small bit it? Oh, yeah. And uh, maybe get the top flap uh, cinched a little bit more. I, I pulled it, but it doesn't look like I pulled it as it could be. As the space station flies 259 statute miles over Algeria, astronauts are closing out the last work site of the day, the nadir side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Oh, well, thank you. Packing, uh, or are you uh, packing bags is kind of my thing. Um, we. I think crew lock back three could be closed up if inventoried, and we're just we're uh, down those two caps we just installed. Yep, we concur. While he's doing his GCA, then uh, you can um, put the uh, tool board back away. That can't remember if you got the red off the diagonal beam handrail already. I think you did. Yes, yeah. the governor, are you ready? Just give me a time. Okay, we're ready. We were just waiting for you guys with that last bag discussion. So are you ready for breaks off now and the motion to your right? I'm ready for motion to my right. Lucas, starting motion to your right. Okay, I'm taking care of the clearance in my, from my helmet. Copy. Keep motion. Continuing. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of pictures, uh, and then I, I would like the team to superimpose where they expect me to put the clips. Yeah, so Luca, while you're okay, taking those right. pictures, you know the struts on the other side of the radiator that we were, were talking about earlier today, the ones you, you, can, you can touch the outer ones but not the middle one? Yeah. yeah. Can you get your eyes on those struts? I know this is the, it's the exact opposite side. From 
Yeah. On the way back, I can do that. No, no, it's... It means it's uh, to the row, you right? No, no, I'm, I'm just telling you they're the exact same struts, but where you are, the opposite side of the radiator, that's what you need to reach. Yeah, that's it. So one of the, right where that strap is right now, Luca, that's where you're going to have to reach and you're going to put a strap around for the MLI. And I'm handing over in 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah, so take a good picture of that and, uh, and then uh, I'll talk to you on the other side of this handover. Yo. How are you doing? I'm starting to clean forward on cleaning up. Awesome. Okay, Luca, I'm back Anything with you. Anything I can do? Yeah, AJ, I have two, I have two hands on it. I, I can leave, there's still no touch anything. And I'm wrapped up, my hands are both on the, on the strut. So I'm pretty confident about that position. Okay, perfect. So that's one of them. And then the other thing the other thing you need to do is once you, uh, you wrap the connector around that strut, you tuck the back flap of the cover, um, which is more just in towards AMS. So not on the side like you are right now, but back a little bit towards the middle and in straight towards AMS. There's another, I guess it's a strut in there. That could be it. I can't see it in your camera, but that's where it is. Yeah, that looks about right, and then you, you tuck the MLI in under there. Yeah, I think you're giving us good view. So maybe take a picture of that area, and we'll be able to circle it for you uh, before the next DBA. Okay. Okay, Luca, it's great. We're just checking to see if there's anything else we want you to investigate before you leave. Absolutely. Take your time. All the time that we have, let's use it. But this is the first time I've seen this site. And All right, last thing, Luca, would be getting eyes on the path where the, um, the tubes two and four are going to come down from the new pump box. You looked at it from the other side, but can you get eyes on or a picture of it from this side? Um, and you talked to us. It would be easier to uh, take me back to where I was. Yeah, we may not need it. You talked to us through it before and said it was going to be really easy for you, um, and we think you took a picture at that time. Was that correct? Took a picture and video side. Um, Jessica, do you have um, – can you give me 40 centimeters to my left? 40 centimeters left? Yes, no problem. 
you know, I'll also add that I, when I leaned back and I looked at the Nader worksite, while Luca was in the VSB, I could see his light shining through a, a bunch of places. It, it, is, it looks like a pretty open shot. Okay, you ready for that motion? Drew, you ready for clearances? Yes, I'm ready for clearance. I have to starting to, motion. I have to clear just to Okay, starting motion. NASA astronaut Jessica Mir using the Canada Arm 2 to move Luca Parmitano back into position to get some final photos of that work site. Hey, there it is. Do you have a chance to go towards the VSB? Yep. Let's see if you can uh, identify that path. And Luke, are we done the GCA? Um, so we're not uh, GCA complete for the moment, but not very soon. GCA complete. So, Luca, we, we do have a few minutes here, so all we wanted to do is give you an opportunity to understand that path from the, the point of view that you're going to see it from, those two tubes coming down to you, and uh, you can take a picture of it if you like, and then that's going to wrap up our work at this work site. I would like to see that, so I'd like to see uh, Drew at the VSB site, and you uh, watch for my... Uh, I like, you can see, I mean, I can, I can see you on the, I can see you through here. Okay, if you can speak ahead, right there, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. I see your video camera, so I'm, I don't, I don't want to look at it. Looks pretty straightforward. Yeah, we we could see Drew through uh, your WVS as well, so that looked good. It's the path right as we were going. Basically around along the vacuum case below, below the the TPC. Between the TPC and the, and the budget case. Let me down my way. Yeah, what you described sounds right to me. I'll just check with the team. So, between the vacuum case and the TTCB is where those tubes are going to go. Yeah, hey, uh, I think Drew has the exact idea, and uh, I think it will be obvious. Okay. It's not, it's not easy. There's nothing ever is, but obviously. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't want to give you any easy jobs. Okay, that wraps it up, Luca. Drew, do you need anything from us uh, before we get uh, Luca on his way out of that work site? Um, we'll just need some time to do some of our inventories, uh, but I think we'll get him out of the, uh, the uh, GCA area. Okay, we agree. All right, Luca. Uh, take yourself home, and then uh, let us know when GCA action is complete. Okay, Jessica, you can uh, fly to the nearest published position for the renewal home. Okay, Lucas, stand by one. As Luca Parmitano and Drew Morgan close out their work at this last work site for the day, for the day they took some additional pictures uh, to remember the sensitive tubes that they should try to avoid as they make their way back here on the next scheduled Alpha Magnetic Spacewalk. They also took some time to understand the area and the robotics it took to get them there on the Canid Arm too.
Okay, copy that. Okay, Luca, we've got slightly amended. We're not going to do just a reverse of how you got in there. We're going to start out with a positive pitch. So we're going to pitch you up. Ready, motion. Copy. As Parmitano and Drew Morgan move away from this work site, they are reaching almost five hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk. To bring you to your left. The astronauts have completed all of their tasks for today, starting out by preparing the power cable that will eventually route power from the station to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, and installing the Mechanical Attachment Device, or MAD, that will house the upgraded Thermal Tracker Pump System, which we will see installed on the spacewalk December 2nd. Parmitano disabled the what was current cooling system, uh, which was flowing carbon dioxide to the alpha magnetic spectrometer by clipping a tube and venting any existing CO2 in the system. He then moved on to cut six stainless steel tubes in the vertical support beam area. Those will be connected to the cooling system on the next spacewalk. After closing out that work site and making sure everything was thermally protect protected and in a good configuration, they moved to this work site on the nadir side of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Parmitano removed the insulation and cut, ad cut an additional two tubes, then capped them to identify and protect from any sharp edges. Today was an extremely challenging spacewalk, every movement being deliberate and uh, work sites being very delicate. As spacewalkers prepare to repair the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Okay, starting motion is going to be about 1.4 meters. What makes these spacewalks most challenging is that they were never planned to be attempted because the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, or AMS, was expected to have a three-year lifetime. However, it has been in operation for over eight and a half years now and collected data on over 140 billion cosmic ray events. because these spacewalks were not intended. Specific tools have been developed on the ground, tools and procedures over the last four years that allowed the spacewalkers to complete the work they did today and what we hope to see on the next two spacewalks to repair the AMS. Okay, Luca, now we are going to bring you Station Zenith. Station Zenith from here. I Okay, copy, starting motion. Okay, Luca, stopping motion there. Copy. 
Spacewalks like these in which teams have had to develop new tools and specific processes help us prepare for future long-duration missions when other difficult tasks crop up, like our journey to the moon with the Artemis program. Okay, we copy that uh, we're ending the GCA at this point and uh, we're ready to start talking to Drew. I'd get a glove and a half check, half check from you though, Luca, first. Change using my gloves, no deltas, and uh, dry hat. Okay, Drew, same from you uh, when you're ready. Uh, dry hat and uh, my gloves are uh, no deltas from the last report. Okay, what do you want to clean up first, Drew? Uh, I'll start with the red bag, and um, we'll talk about what's in it. Take it in for a Joe cast. Luca, I'm going to start motion. It's going to be 3.5 minutes. Roger. Motion. Go ahead, the red bag, Drew. Okay, on the red bag exterior, two large adjustables, large small reds on the outside. Um, and then on the inside, on the lid, there's now a small, small red that previously had the clip. It is now uh, just an empty red on the lid. And the fish stringer. On the fish stringer, all I have is the tool board and the uh, EVA inspection mirror. The tool board has an adjustable, small, small adjustable red and a small, small red attached to it. And then the tools, we've got a rough cutter, boot straightener, boot puller, clean cutter, and the seven eighths. On the back uh, remaining, we used three pieces of tape today, so we have at least 15 remaining. Two, three, four, five. Okay, copy that. We were... Yeah, for, uh, about 14-ish. Okay, about 14 piece of tape. We were expecting uh, the adjustable with a rep from the MAD, but I think that ended up somewhere else, so we'll find that. Uh, it did. I don't recall which bag I put it in. A bag. And, uh, yep, no worries. I called it at the time, but I don't recall which we put it in. I think Crew Lock Back 2 was the one we were working in at the time, so it probably ended up there. Yeah. Okay, we'll find it, Drew. The Rets in Crew Lock Bag 3, and we'll find the adjustable. So that's a good uh, inventory of the red bag. Okay, copy. And then this goes without saying, the large, small red at some point you're going to put inside the lid before you tighten it up. I'm going to close it up with, uh, and leave just enough room to do that. It'll be one of the last things I do is uh, tuck those inside. Yeah, that makes sense. By all means, uh, though, remind me before I leave the site. You know we will. As Luca Parmitano on your screen is being transported back to the airlock, NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan is taking inventory and cleaning up all of the tools that he has. In the meantime, we're going to take some Ask NASA questions, starting with this one from Miss C's fourth grade students. They want to know why astronauts have mirrors on their gloves. It's a good question. The primary reason the crew wears mirrors on their wrist is to be able to see the switches and labeling on the front of the suit that's out of their view. This is how they control things like cooling, oxygen uh, volume, and more. The labeling on the suit is written in a mirror image because it's intended to be read via the mirror on their wrist.
We have another question from John, who wants to know how much spacesuits weigh. On Earth, spacesuits weigh about 300 pounds, but of course that's practically nothing when in microgravity. Spacesuits are also called EMUs, or extravehicular mobility units. They're practically human-sized spacecraft, and they have a lifetime of about 15 years. The next thing we want to do is crew lock bag number two. Okay, ready. Okay, crew lock bag number two. On the exterior, I have a small, small. That's it. On the inside, starting at the 12 o'clock position, I've got an integral red, so an adjustable. On that adjustable, uh, I have an empty hook and a dyno cutter. Now, let, uh, let me start by saying that I know that the dyno cutter and the lancer ended up uh, in different places, but I, I have both of those tools. I see them both. Um, so at the 12 o'clock position, I've got two adjustables, and uh, each has one empty hook, and one has the lancer, and one has the dyno. Okay, that's and good. And I have, down at the 6 o'clock position in the integral, I've got the empty caddy with the red, gold, and green bit. And here's the, that spare adjustable that we recovered from the MAD, and it has vice grip on it. Okay, copy. What are we missing? Anything? Go ahead, uh, zip tie cutter. Die cutter on a ret uh, at the 10 o'clock position. It's there. Okay, that's a good config. And crew lock bag two is going back in the green bag. We have it on hook two, but you can put it wherever you like. Yep. Copy. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan completing some more inventory. This is a view from his helmet camera, designated as number 18 in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Meanwhile, Luca Parmitano is still on his way back to the airlock, taking a ride on the Canada Arm 2, being controlled by NASA astronaut Jessica Meir. These alpha magnetic spectrometer spacewalks, as we have mentioned, were four years in the making. It's a major milestone for the International Space Station program and the alpha magnetic spectrometer team. Uh, now I'll start with the larger U bag green bag. Okay. Work our way back inside. All right. Okay, Luca, we're ready for motion. It's going to be three minutes in course. Okay. Starting motion. Another major milestone for NASA is the development of the NASA Commercial Crew Program, and things are progressing there. Boeing rolled out its CST-100 Starliner and stacked it as well yesterday, Thursday, November 21st. On the lid, I have that occurred at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. It sets the stage for final reviews and processing, leading up toward a launch to the International Space Station. It's currently scheduled for Tuesday, December 17th. This will be an uncrewed flight, and it'll demonstrate Starliner systems ahead of the first flight test with a crew in 2020. 
Our other commercial crew program partner, SpaceX, completed its static fire test earlier this month, and that sets the stage for the in-flight abort test. That will demonstrate the Crew Dragon's ability to escape any failing rocket in flight and safely return to splashdown off the Florida coast. That demonstration date is currently planned for later this year, pending completion of reviews following the static fire test. Position hold, Luca. We're going to load the next show cast. Copy. We'll see status. Um, just about an inventory and bag. One more bag to go. We lock back four. On the outside, I have a large, small. If you're, uh, if you're with me, we. Luca, starting the next showcast, 3.5 minutes. Go ahead, Drew. In motion. I'm last for a sec. In the exterior weed, I've got the large, small, red, and that's it, a trash bag, a wipe. Twelve-inch extension uh, with the knob, in bit, and uh, there's an interval red, and then there's a red from the knob to the Twelve inch extension. I mentioned the wire tie caddy. I think we didn't use any wires out of it. GoPro camera currently is on my new workstation with its additional red. Is there a red on that trash bag? So your com was ready there. Say again. There's a red on the trash bag. Okay. Small, small. 
And then the last thing we're looking for is adjustable with a EVA wipe. Three adjustable with the EVA wipe. Okay, that's a good bag, Drew. Okay, Drew, they're going to be uh, doing a GCA here shortly. So just tell me what ounce you need to keep you moving during that GCA. Um, yeah, I'm going to just I'll package up my large small red and cover that fair leaf, steer the bags down, and I'll give I'll, I'll stand by until you give me the go to head back in. I know I got to also break down the ATFR. Okay. Or, uh, or fold it down. Good on that. And then we'll do one reality check of the work site. Just give it a good scan. We don't think we've left anything out there, but you can have one more look for us. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan completing some cleanup and inventory. And ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano being moved back near the airlock, uh, taking a ride on the Canada Arm 2. Speaking of inventory, we have an Ask NASA question about that sort of thing. And this comes from some more fourth graders, Mrs. Purnell's class to be specific. They want to know how Luca's tools stay in his bag. Both Luca and Drew um, Morgan have been using RETS, which you've probably heard a few times today. That stands for Retractable Equipment Tether. And that tethers the tools to the bag, and if they need to move those tethers, they can also attach them to their suits. Okay, hey, Luca, we'll be coming station after about a meter. Ready for motion? Ready for motion. 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 Continuing. As we approach the six-hour mark in today's spacewalk, the International Space Station is also approaching a sunrise, currently flying 261 statute miles north of Papua New Guinea. Okay, Luca, that's your published APFR egress position. Are you in a good position there? That is a good position, JCA complete. Okay, JCA complete. Brakes are coming on. Brakes are on. You have a go for APFR egress. Copy. And as you heard from NASA astronaut Jessica Mir, Luca Parmitano has reached the portion of which he can egress from the APFR, or Articulating Portable Foot Restraint, which you just saw him do, meaning he is now disconnected from the Canada Arm 2. First, I need, uh, I need to recover my... Okay, so you want me to go grab the other space better before the arm motion? Yeah, it's up to you, Luca. You can. We do need to pitch the whiff extender. You can do it in either order. Yeah, I actually don't get to that from here, so. And Luca, we have one more maneuver for you for the APFR config, and that is a station zenith up two meters. Okay, you will go for that maneuver. Okay, copy that.
We're switching modes now, Luca. Okay, Luca, starting motion, station Zenith. Ready for motion? I'm ready for motion. Copy, starting. Motion. Copy, continuing. Okay. Yeah, by Luca, we lost our camera view, so I'm just going to ramp out for a minute there. Problem. Luke, I'm ready to resume motion now, Zenith, if you're ready. And I'm ready. Hey, copy, continuing. That's a good position there. They were in tolerance of the published there. Is that JCA complete, Luca? JCA complete because of the break sword. Hey, copy. Breaks are on. Copy. Go for APSR config. Copy. You're actually, so currently I am at the uh, drop off for my uh, AC batteries. So I'm going to do a swap right now. I'll recover this one first. Okay, that sounds good, Luca. You go for that swap. Drew, how are you doing? Doing well. I uh, just wanted to make sure that everybody's okay with me leaving the one adjustable for my fair lead out to help secure the bag down. Yep, we got to go on that yesterday. We're good on that. I got a couple questions for you just to confirm before we leave. The uh, large ORU bag straps are on their lower tether points confirmed. I'll confirm that here in a second. My green tether is back on me, locked back on black. Okay, copy. Check the reels are unlocked. And the next thing you have a go to is remove the one from the arm. I can confirm the reel is unlocked. And going for arm deconfiguration. We, I can confirm that the large, small reps are both inside their respective bag. My fair lead is up, and I'm using that to secure the bag down. The APFR is folded. Using, uh, all the bags are uh, secured with their lower tether points, as uh, specified, and everything looks good. Look back at the work site. Okay. Looks like you've got everything. So you're bringing crew lock no bag. Okay. Copy. Looks like you bring in crew lock bag uh, back with you. Crew lock bag four, and uh, you've got to go to start translating back home. We're handing over in 15 seconds. I'll be back in a minute. Luca, for you before I go, you can get the whip extender to golf. In the wrist extender, and also I'm going to um,
Okay, Luke, I think we're back with you. Um, just to help us with our robo-analysis, after you get that with extender to golf, if you could just read all the settings from bottom to top on that setup, that'll help us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. This extender is on six golf. And then I have uh, I see the double line. So if it's well, I mean, I mean, the the clocking of the of the ATSR. I have to study my eyes and the rest of the time after this. A view from Luca Parmentano's helmet camera as he configures the articulating portable foot restraint for use at the end of the Canon Arm 2 on the next scheduled spacewalk to repair the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That view below is the South Pacific Ocean as the International Space Station flies 264 statute miles above Earth. Those are good settings, Luca. Thank you. Okay. Actually, sorry, sorry for uh, eighty-five six boxes, boxes, boxes. Well, yeah, absolutely, Luca. We uh, we are following along. Good. Okay, that should be your last task. You're uh, heading back to the airlock. Maybe a photo opportunity of Drew coming down face one here. We got lots of time to get in. We're uh, PET of six hours and ten minutes right now. Okay, I'm gonna wait for Drew then. Yeah, I'm making my way. I'm at my green hook. What is the TP, Jeremy, 650, you said? I couldn't understand that. Say again, Luca. The TP that you just read to us? Six hours, ten minutes. Oh, wow. Drew, just a reminder, you're picking up your green hook on the way home. And I don't know if you wanted a reminder today about the, the uh, light stanchion. Yeah. yeah, Luca, uh, I'll keep an eye on it for me. The, uh, I gave the brake on the starboard side, uh, see the cart, a pump, two pumps, and then I have my green hook with me. All right. Great. Do you have a clear path to the airlock so now? Uh, just uh, the extension for sure. You want to look at it? I have eyes on it. Sorry, I wasn't watching, Drew. Did you get the brakes on that seat of card as well? I did. I got the uh, fourth card as well. Thank you.
at six hours and 13 minutes into the spacewalk. You can see NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan making his way back towards the airlock and ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano. Fun watching you oh, take them. Over. You see, this is... Sorry, go ahead, Drew. This is my uh, feather on that light. Or I'm gonna have to watch that. Make sure it's gonna come off. Copy. Okay, you see it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not coming off right now. Easily. I think I'm going to have to go outboard and, and get it a little bit lower. It's just bring you now to the yeah. right. Good job. It's fun watching you take those Look pictures, Luca, because it uh, looks like the just an amazing backdrop that you guys had for that. Like a RTV from my glove. I'm where it came from, but it came from the palm. But I still have a good. That flap on my something uh, came off that flap on my palm, uh, but there's still RTV intact underneath. Okay, Drew, we'll shut for the arm. Can you go a little uh, to this? Yep. We copied Drew and we saw the, the little piece there. Okay, Drew, stand by. To you above, you know. We're going down the feet of spur. I can get you with the background. And watch out for that. Uh, your your center pack is crazy. Yeah. I think so. Before heading back into the airlock, the crew members are getting some photos of each other while still outside the hatch with the amazing backdrop of the earth below. And uh, when you get to the first part of this, this part, just stop for a second for me. This part? Yeah.
Copy lead, I'm at the bottom of the Cedar Spur. Copy. You have a no a go to ingress. They are following. Unless you got anything else for me to do, uh, maybe. Copy. At almost six hours and 20 minutes, you can see the spacewalkers approaching the hatch, and the thermal cover is now open, ready for them to venture back inside the International Space Station. My right waist tether is to the airlock B ring extender, get close, slider lock, black on black. Copy, Drew. And I'm crawling up inside. Okay, then I'm going to retrieve your safety battery, is that correct? That's correct. I'm safe. We concur. Hey, I have EDQ's anchor on my waist better, right inside. Both hooks are locked, black on black. So I have, uh, I'm safe through through, and I'm retrieving my green better. Okay, we concur. Drew, before I come inside, I would like to pass you the one of your bags. Are you okay? Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll just read it to me. Since we don't have anything. Uh, or, or if there's a, actually, you have a second one on there, so. Send no, it. There's plenty of there's plenty. There's a large small. They can go many different things. I thought you think they're a nice small rat. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're handing over in 20 seconds. Once you're inside, Luca, you can close the thermal cover, and we'll talk to you on the other side of this uh, LOS. Hey, copy. We, you can release your red, uh, Luca. Hey, copy. My red is going back to my BRC. <laughs> As the astronauts enter the crew lock section of the Quest airlock, there's a short handover period. Ingress to the Quest airlock uh, begins the end of the spacewalk for today, but what will actually mark the end of the timer is when the repressurization of the airlock begins. Once the crew lock section is completely repressurized, the astronauts will, uh, on the other side of the Quest airlock, will once again open the hatch and bring the crew members from the crew lock side into the equipment lock side. They'll help them doff their suits, and the SAFERS, the simplified aid for EVA rescue, will be removed. Then we're going for SCUs.
Hey, Luca, can you confirm the Velcro strap for the thermal cover is uh, is attached? It's on the inside and attached. Thank you, Luca. It's really baked out, man. That's a very good shape. Hold on a second, Luca. I think my left, your plus my leg is. I'm, I can't really rotate right now. All right, work. No, I don't, work. Know, I don't know where you want me. There we go. I want. Yeah, you're fine. I'm I'm clocked the best way right here now. Okay, my SU is connected. Okay, now I can open up my. Okay, just a note that increasing your cooling setting will minimize your time to get cooling on SCU, so setting at 8 to max cold might help you. This view from Luca Parmentano's helmet camera showing the thermal hatch cover is closed. Okay, you are both go to turn your water off, OFF. Water off. You two, water off. Okay, we're starting a two minute clock. Next will be closing the hatch. Copy. Copy. A couple things we can do here, Luca, is just verify that the outer hatch is clear of hardware and you can verify the handle position on the hatch and prepare it to close. Okay, the hatch is clear. I can see the people start is in a good position. Everything is well closed. And when you guys give me the go, I will be ready to close it. Okay, those are all good words. Uh, to all of you up there, thanks again for another uh, incredible EVA. Got all our tasks done today. Very happy here on the ground, and uh, really nice touch of you guys to, to take the, the ground team to space with you on those little tape tags, so appreciate that. We, um, we think that these reviews are so far being successful thanks to the incredibly detailed preparation that was done on the ground. And that's why we like to honor the teams. Uh, today we were thinking about not only the teams that developed the instruments, but also the, the tools that we use up here to prepare ourselves. And I'm talking about procedures talking about the pictures that were uploaded and um, virtual reality systems, robotic procedures. All of those let us get outside or maybe with a very clear picture in mind of what we want to do. And I believe that that is the key part of the reason to achieve far the results that we have been able to. So thank you very much to all those 
Therefore, doctors in the plenty of expertise in this second EVA, and uh, we're very happy and honored to take you all us up that. We wish we had a piece of tape for every one of you. Unfortunately, we couldn't, but we hope to represent all of those that have participated. We appreciate those great words, Luca. Uh, we are ready to uh, close the hatch. You have a go. Okay. Some thoughtful words from ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano reflecting on uh, the team that put together these spacewalks, the tools developed and the procedures. These spacewalks having been four years in the making and their difficulty cannot be understated. Copy hatch lock work. On the UIA, EMU 1 and 2 oxygen valves open. The UIA oxygen EMU 1 and 2 valves are open. Okay, switch power EV 1 and 2 to on on the UIA. Check the LEDs and the volts. The UIA. Copy. On the UIA. EV 1. Power on with the EMPI, new green LED, 18.6 volts. V2, power on, EMU, green LED, and 18.6 volts. Okay, and both of you can switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. You are. You. All right, over to you, Nana. You got them. Thank you, Jeremy, and welcome back, Drew and Luca. Congratulations to you and all the teams today on a very successful day. Great to have you back. For both of you, you can take your O2 actuator to press. Copy. Copy. Do you work? EV1, EV2, press. Copy EV1, EV2. Luca, check that the EV hatch m is closed. EV hatch m is closed. Copy. We're now going to be throttling the IV hatch equalization valve. Let us know how the rate is. We'll be checking in with you. Copy. Andrew, Luca, the valve is cracked. Let us know how that rate is. Does it feel okay? It's good to go here. What's the truth? You want to be too?
And now that repressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock has begun, the EVA ended, the spacewalk that is, at 12.35 p.m. Central Time, 1.35 p.m. Eastern Time, lasting a total of 6 hours and 33 minutes. Andrew and Luca, would you like a little increase in the rate or stay where you're at? Uh, you can increase a little bit. Definitely increase. In this view, you can see the equipment side of the Quest airlock, where NASA astronaut Christina Cook and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka will be assisting the crew once repressurization is complete by helping them doff their spacesuits. As repressurization continues in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, after this six hour and 33 minute spacewalk, let's recap some of the work that was done today. The astronauts accomplished all of their tasks, which started by them preparing the power cable that will route power from the space station to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. They also installed the mechanical attachment device that will hold the upgraded thermal tracker pump system that will be installed on the third spacewalk currently scheduled for December 2nd. If, then they cut the tube that was routing carbon dioxide through the alpha magnetic spectrometer, permanently disabling the cooling system and venting the existing CO2. They moved on to cut six stainless steel tubes in the vertical support beam. And those will be connected to the cooling system on the next spacewalk after a smooth cut and a swage or a splicing happens. After closing out that work site, they moved to the nadir side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer to remove the insulation and cut a remaining two stainless steel tubes, then capped those for access on the next spacewalk as well.
back in uh, airlock pressure toggling. I was wondering if you just update us on what we're at right now. <laughs> On our DTM at 1.2. Okay, you can use a little feed down at South San Luis, it's not too easy. Copy. Sorry guys, I was still on three, talking to the ground for a moment, my bad. I am with you on one and I copied uh, that you now have the pressure on your GCM and we do agree, I copied 1.2. Now, you can increase slightly, I will let you know if my ears are spotting you. Increasing slightly. Your increase. With the completion of today's spacewalk, we have some updated stats. This is the 223rd spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly and maintenance, and the 10th spacewalk conducted at the space station this year. It's the fourth spacewalk of Luca Parmitano's career. He comes up with a total of 20 hours and 51 minutes of spacewalk time. And it's the fifth spacewalk of Drew Morgan's career, totaling at 33 hours and 30 minutes. Today's spacewalk, as we mentioned, lasted six hours and 33 minutes. And that brings the total spacewalk time ever at the International Space Station to 1,401 hours and 41 minutes, which is equivalent to 58 days, nine hours and 41 minutes of time. You ready for another increase? Small increase, yeah. Very small. Copy. Small increase. And there's your small increase. Let me know how that feels. Thank you. And I copied you're ready for another slight increase. Yes, by now he's been uh, off the norm. You're about 60% of the way between off and norm. Okay. So it looks like that increase? Again. Luca, would you still like the increase? Uh, yeah, I got a 10% increase. Copy that. And there's your increase.
Repressurization continues in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, while NASA astronaut Christina Cook and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka await Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano's arrival back in the equipment lock portion of the airlock. Just as they helped the astronauts get into their suits this morning, they will help them doff their suits following this six hour and 33 minute spacewalk. Airlock Houston, stop the repress. Sir, Christina, I'm catching up on the reason. Hey, Drew and Luca, I show us at 5 TSI. For right now, we're going to be doing a leak check, so we're going to have a two-minute stabilization time. Copy. Copy. Just like for depressurization at the beginning of today's spacewalk, there's a pause at five, point, uh, five pounds per square inch of pressure as the astronauts conduct another leak check on their suits. Okay, Lewis, uh, Luca and Drew, we are now starting the one minute leak check. Hey, copy and copy. Did uh, Mark get us uh, an answer? It, it sounded like we were being brought to a, an early halt. Was that? We were at five, so he was just uh, calling us to go ahead and follow according to the step four. Okay, copy. Good copy.
Hey, Ms. Andrew, I'm showing a good leak check. Proceeding on to step eight, can you check that your glove heaters are off, OFF? Give me one, OFF. Give me two, OFF. Copy, and check your gloves for any contamination. No contamination, give me one. Give me two, no contamination. Copy that. For both of you, take your O2 actuators to IV. EV2 IV. EV2 IV. EV1, EV2, and I'm taking the IV hatch equalization valve back to where it was when we stopped the repress. So, okay. again, I'll be checking with, in with you on the rate. Okay. Okay. Repressurization continues aboard the International Space Station in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock as checks continue here on the ground to ensure everything is all good as the spacewalkers have wrapped up their six hour and 33 minute spacewalk for the day. Do you guys like an increase in the rate or stay where we're at? Uh, you can try and I'll let you know if it's uh, bothering me. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with whatever Luca is willing to do. Happy. And there's a little bump in the rate. Okay, where are we at in percentage between uh, off and on? 70%. Okay, give me uh, give me eighty and see what happens. Copy that. It's about eighty percent of the way to norm. Okay. I think we can go to Norm, but it looks like it's under control. Happy, we'll go to Norm. Is it back to Norm? How's that feel? So far, so good. Yeah. yeah.
and both, for both of your awarenesses, you will potentially have an alert tone when our DCDC gets close to zero. Copy. I Hey guys, we're showing uh, pretty close to replay. We're going to go ahead and open the hatch. All right. We'll be ready. Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka working to open the hatch at the completion of repressurization in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Station on one, we have the hatch open and we're go for your step four. All right, Christina, we will put that in work and you, of course, are go to continue with step five and beyond. Uh, one other comment is that we're going to do some UHF troubleshooting, so we would like you to delay step 35 until we give you a go for it. We do not want you to switch the comm modes off until we tell you. Okay, I copy that. We'll delay the comments off and we'll check in with you when we get to that step, step 35. Good copy. Thanks, Mark. Later. Do we, we smell like space? As Mir and Skripochka bring the spacewalkers back into the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, just a recap of all of the tasks they completed today during this 6-hour and 33-minute spacewalk. They first uh, worked on a power cable that will eventually provide power to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, routing that from the station. And they installed the MAD, the mechanical attachment device, which will mount uh, the thermal 
upgraded thermal tracker pump system will be mounted to it. They moved on to disable the cooling system that was uh, providing carbon dioxide to the alpha magnetic spectrometer by cutting the tube and venting any existing CO2 in the pipe. Once all CO2 was confirmed to have vented, they cut six stainless steel tubes in the ver vertical support beam area, uh, capped those tubes, which prepares them for the next scheduled spacewalk on December 2nd, in which they will smooth cut those tubes and swage them or splice them to the new upgraded tracker thermal pump system. After closing out that work site and thermally protecting it, they removed insulation on the nadir side of the alpha magnetic spectrometer to prepare for the remaining two stainless steel tubes to be cut today. Once that was complete, they were capped for access on the next spacewalk as well. After cleanup and translating back to the airlock, the repressurization began ending today's spacewalk at six hours and 33 minutes. As you can see, Mir and Skarpochia are removing the SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, from NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan. Morgan did not have to use the SAFER today, as its primary use is intended for astronauts to maneuver back to the station should they ever become detached.
After a six hour and 33 minute spacewalk today, another look at the stats. It was the 223rd spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly and Maintenance, being the 10th conducted at the space station this year. It was Parmitano's fourth spacewalk, totaling 20 hours and 51 minutes outside the hatch for him, and the fifth spacewalk of Drew Morgan's career, coming to 33 hours and 30 minutes. Because today's spacewalk lasted 6 hours and 33 minutes, that brings the total spacewalking time ever at the space station up to 1,401 hours and 41 minutes, which equals 58 days, 9 hours, and 41 minutes of total spacewalking time. NASA astronaut Jessica Meir coming into the picture, into the equipment lock of the Quest airlock. She was the robotics controller today for the Canada Arm 2. And that's what maneuvered ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano to and from and around the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer worksite. Luca Parmitano now back in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock following the completion of the second spacewalk to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a cosmic ray detector installed in 2011 and operating for eight and a half years. Airlock Houston, no response required. While I have a captive audience, because Luca and Drew can talk, I just wanted to congratulate both of you on doing an incredibly good job. And actually, the congratulations goes to all five of you from from uh, airlock operations through robotic ops. Everything was fantastic. Well done.
As noted, all tasks were successfully completed by the spacewalkers and the entire team today, preparing the astronauts in the International Space Station, setting everything up in a good configuration for continuation of these alpha magnetic spectrometer spacewalks. The next spacewalk, the third in this series of four, will take place on December 2nd. Airlock Houston on Space to Ground One. Uh, Christina, if you wouldn't mind um, checking the uh, TCV on EV1 to make sure that uh, Luca's setting is three or higher. We're seeing his temperature inside the suit being above 100 degrees right now. Can work. TCV was at two. We've moved it to six. Okay, and whatever is comfortable for him. But uh, just wanted to draw attention to the fact that that suit was getting warm inside. Of course, we know that Luca is tough as nails, so uh, we would expect him to, to be unflappable by any temperature, so we just wanted to look out for him. That's eight. I'm sorry, if that was for Houston, say again. Lucas cooling is now on eight. Copy setting is eight, thank you. Houston Station, Lucas cooling is now on eight. Thanks much, we copy. Uh, Jessica, if you're on one, uh, go ahead, on three. For Jessica, Airlock, Houston on one, we're seeing the same indications we saw for Luca on Drew. So if you can check his TCV as well, we'd appreciate it. And we copy. We're looking into Drew's TCV as well. And we're showing it at a three currently, and I just moved it to a six. Copy six. That should work fine. Thanks. And also, Mark, for your information, we will be unsuiting Luca first. Copy.
NASA astronaut Christina Cook helping ESA astronaut Luca Parmitano, who is resting in his suit after a strenuous six hour and 33 minute spacewalk, doff that suit. She'll then move over to NASA's Andrew Morgan and help him do the same. Airlock Houston on one, hoping to confirm with you who you'd like to be um, or have access to the audio and video from the airlock. And we've got space to ground four privatized for you. And Mark Surgeon, please. Copy, and that's in work. Go to five and with Surgeon request. And airlock Houston on one, space to ground four is privatized. We'll have the uh, surgeon call you when they're on the loop. Happy, we'll wait on four. This view of Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room showing the teams who commanded the spacewalk today, including Flight Director Jeff Radigan, who led all of the flight controllers on the ground throughout the spacewalk, and Capcom Mark Vandehei. He was on hand to speak with the station astronauts and handed over the communications to the ground IV, who spoke directly to the spacewalkers as they moved throughout their task today, walking them step by step through the spacewalk. For this spacewalk, that was Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jeremy Hansen, who also has trained extensively on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer tasks. The lead EVA officer or spacewalk officer for all of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalks is John Malarski.
Sioux Station on one. We were wondering what the status of the proceeding past Step 35 was at this time. Checking. All right, Christina, thanks for asking. We're going to have you do step 35 now and then continue on as nominal with the rest of the procedure. Happy, we'll execute the procedure nominally. With both astronauts back inside the equipment portion of the Quest airlock, the spacewalk for today, the second to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, has been completed in six hours and 33 minutes. It was the tenth spacewalk at the International Space Station this year, the fourth for Luca Parmitano and the fifth for Andrew Morgan. All tasks were completed today, everyone performing nominally. And the next spacewalk to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer is currently targeted for Monday, December 2nd. Airlock Houston on one, just big picture. We um, put all of the video, um, internal video from the station, we turned that off, so we're not seeing any uh, internal video at the moment. Totally fine with it, whatever you'd like. Happy start, thank you. With the completion of today's six hour and 33 minute spacewalk, the 10th of the year, that concludes our coverage for today. Thanks for joining us and we hope you will join us again on Monday, December 2nd, the targeted date for the next repair of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Signing off for now, this is Mission Control Houston. Thank <laughs> you.